The Charles River on a beautiful Saturday afternoon in Boston, a perfect setting for the opener of the Ivy League Game of the Week on Versus. The Ivy League's early surprise has been the Cornell Big Red, led by quarterback Nathan Ford. They've already knocked off Ivy preseason co-favorite Yale. Today, Cornell looks for a win against perennial favorite Harvard. The Crimson are looking for a rebound after being stunned by Brown in their Ivy opener. Quarterback Chris Pizzotti leads a high-powered passing attack that must deliver today if Harvard hopes to have a chance to repeat as Ivy champs. It's Cornell and Harvard next on Versus. Welcome to, to the Ivy League Game of the Week, presented by TIAA Prep. Today, Cornell takes on Harvard from Harvard Stadium. Hello, everyone. Rich Ackerman, along with former Dallas Cowboy Dale Hellestray. Bob Harwood will join us shortly. Dale Cornell, in the preseason, was picked to finish sixth in the Ivy League. They're 3-0 thus far, and they have 33 seniors determined to make this final season a magical one. Well, they have, and the reason that they have those 33 seniors, they were pointing towards this season and what that has allowed them to do is plays like this capping off a 17 play drive last play of the game touchdown to win another close football game this coaching staff this these players were pointing towards this season to have success three wins by a total of five points for for Cornell thus far for Harvard they have already lost a game in the Ivy League falling at Brown two weeks ago and Dale they still have hopes of an Ivy League title and if they're gonna get there they're gonna ride the right arm of quarterback Chris Pizzotti. Chris Pizzotti has grown into his leadership role here fifth year senior a guy who they have looked forward to see and play this season has all the intangibles leadership character those types of things he's gonna be throwing to some new receivers today he's gonna be a big part of their offense if they're going to win this football game. There's two receivers from last week, both Marco Iannuzzi and Chris Lordich, out today with injuries. Iannuzzi done for the season. The 73rd meeting between these two teams. Kickoff set for just a couple of moments. We'll check in with Ted Robinson in our College Football Central Studios when we come back. Ivy League Game of the Week, presented by TIAA Cref on Versus, is brought to you by TIAA Cref, financial services for the greater good. Nissan set out to create the perfect on road vehicle, and in the process, created a category. Introducing two crossover leaders from Nissan the redesigned Murano awarded as an IIHS top safety pick, and the versatile Rogue, named 2008's best new small crossover. Lease the 27 MPG Nissan Rogue, just $199 a month. Don't follow the leader, own one. At your Nissan dealer now. I heard the call. I believe that God wants me to run for president. You must be joking. You may find yourself in yeah, the devil. Whose job is it to find these damn weapons? You may ask yourself. Ruin the push name. Oh, boss, what do you want me to do that I haven't already done? You got this Guantanamo open. Guantanamo. All right, nobody's going to be hearing from those people for a long, long time. Josh Brolin is W. Rated PG-13. In theaters everywhere Friday. At TIAA Cref, we provide financial solutions for those who serve the greater good. We offer personalized objective advice, a commitment to consistent growth, low fees, 
and guaranteed income for life. Put our retirement expertise to work for you. Call today. TIAA Craft Financial Services for the greater good. All right, guys. Clip of the week. Headliner. What do you got? I've got a killer clip of Beckham getting stuffed on a PK. Penalty kick. Most popular game on the planet. Uh, not sure, Saka, but I think we can beat that. Oh, God! Oh, Saka. Man, get up! Sports Soup on Versus, the show that sports rights. Hosted by Matt Eisman. Premieres Tuesday at 10. Oh! On Versus, tonight and tomorrow at 8. BYU puts the nation's longest winning streak on the line against conference rival TCU. Versus College Football, Thursday. At College Football Central, Ted Robinson, Roland Williams. The studio's even charged up. Cornell has a chance to finish a heck of an Ivy League daily double today. Yeah, before the season started, Yale was ranked number one, Harvard number two. If Harvard wants to get this victory, they got to get it done in their passing game to be effective. We'll be at the half. Highlights, Yale playing at Dartmouth, and yeah, a little game between OU and Texas as well. Rich? Thanks, Ted. Let's go inside the locker rooms before this 73rd meeting between these two teams. First, Harvard with offensive coordinator Joel Lamb. Some last-minute instructions. At this point in the game, we're not talking about X's and O's. You follow me? It's toughness. Be the tougher football team out there. You follow me? Right from the first whistle. Grind on it. Get after it. Play tough. Leadership. We are looking to show the world, anyone who's watching, what our team is all about and what we represent. Oh, yeah. Okay? You're going to take yourself out of that, out of this door today, and you are going to lose yourself in a sea of red. Okay? You are going to be selfless, and you are going to understand one play won't make us, one play won't break us, the most important one's the next one, and you're going to give your all for this team today. And it is going to be the best thing you've ever felt in your world. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Be a gladiator today. Be it for each oh, other. Yeah. And be it for Cornell. Let's go. Let's go. Cornell head coach Jim Knowles with a motivational speech. Bob Harwood joins us with another Jim Knowles motivational method. Yeah, he pulled another trick out of the bag, Rich. I imagine the heart with the Crimson C missing, or at least the Cornell C missing off this gorgeous red helmet. Time honored tradition. Well, this season at the start and through training camp in the fall, they played game number one without the C on the helmet. Jim Knowles took it off trying to send his team a message that we simply weren't tough enough, especially in the five losses last year. We got pushed around a lot was the basic message telling his players you need to earn the right to have the identity back as far as the symbol on the helmet is concerned. Well, they played in the home opener against Bucknell, or at least at Bucknell on the road, and had a solid victory for homecoming game two against Yale. It was handed out over the course of the week, starting with the seniors, so that they'd get the C back and get the confidence back as well. Message delivered, fellas. They've been a tougher football team, and they're off to a 3-0 start, Rich. Thank you very much, Bob. Cornell won the coin toss, but deferred, so Harvard will receive. So the deep men for Harvard, number 21, Ben Jenkins, and number 39, Cheng Ho. Brad Greenway set to get us underway. Cornell looking for its first 4-0 start since 1999. Harvard already with a loss this year, two weeks ago, falling to Brown. Greenway approaches and we're underway. Short kick fielded at the 12. Poe up the middle, gets across the 25 and is swarmed at about the 27 yard line. So Harvard's offense has been very strong thus far. Number one in the Ivy League. They have put points on the board in their first drive in each of their first three games and they're led by their strong arm senior, Chris Pizzotti. So first and 10 from the 27 for the Crimson. Pizzotti will start from the shotgun. 
Man in motion is number 95, the tight end Jason Miller. Pizzotti throws on first down, and it's caught by Levi Richards, a gain of about four. Let's take a look at the Harvard offensive line. The men up front have done a good job protecting Chris Pizzotti, only two sacks thus far, and they're led at left tackle by big junior James Williams. The running backs, Cheng Ho gets the call after a 100-yard performance a week ago. Levi Richards starts for the injured Chris Lordich. Second and six from the 31. And Pizzotti once again will start from the shotgun. And the inside handoff to Ben Jenkins, and he's wrapped up by Lucas McCarthy. The 6'1", 255-pound senior. Let's get a look at the rest of the Cornell defense. Starting alongside McCarthy is Frank Kunis and Dario Arizo, both seniors. It's a 3-3-5 defense. The three linebackers have been very tough, especially Chris Costello, the 6'1", junior. And the Rover will be in the backfield along with Amani Fenton and Frank Moran. The two defensive backs, Tim Bax, perhaps Cornell's best defensive player, and Anthony Sabo, Ivy League Player of the Week a couple of weeks ago. Quick pass inside, and a big game. Adam Chrysis going the distance. Harvard on the board once again on its first drive. Adam Chrysis gets the call because of the injuries to both Marco Iannuzzi and Chris Lordich, and we were waiting for one of those substitutes to emerge, and it's the big freshman. Well, we wondered how these receivers were going to respond to game day action. I think Adam Chris has showed us right there he's ready for Saturday afternoon football in the Ivy League. 67 yards, third time this year the Harvard offense has produced a passing play of 67 yards or more. Patrick Long on for the extra point. The snap is down, and the kick is good. Just a wonderfully set up play, third and short. Quick pass, looking for three or four yards, couple blocks up front. And Chris does the rest, scoring early and looking to score often. For the perfect balance of fuel efficiency and performance, we take energy from exhaust and recycle it. For the perfect balance of fuel efficiency and performance, we take energy from exhaust and recycle it. Turning repetition into joy. The efficient performance of the Saab Turbo. Now is a great time to own any 2008 Saab like this 9.3 Sport sedan. Find your Saab at SaabUSA.com. Want to get strong? Want to get lean? Want to get ripped? Well, now you can with Iron Gym. Iron Gym turns any door into your own personal gym in just seconds. Its unique design wraps around your door frame and uses leverage, so there's no screws and no damage to your door. Start off with chin-ups and pull-ups to develop and strengthen your shoulders, arms, back, and lats. And with three different grip positions, narrow grip, wide grip, and neutral, you can switch up your routine and keep challenging your muscles. But we're not finished there. Take it to the floor for deep push-ups and it's a sturdy base for tricep dips. Then finish up with gut-busting crunches. In just minutes a day, you'll build lean muscle and get ripped. Order Iron Gym today for just two payments of $29.99. You'll also get these hanging ab straps for an explosive abdominal workout. But call right now and we'll cut the price in half. That's Iron Gym with hanging ab straps for just one payment of $29.99. But you've got to call now. Welcome back, Rich Ackerman along with Dale Hellestray. Adam Chrysis, a big start, his first reception as a collegiate athlete, and it's a memorable one, Dale Hellestray, a 67-yard touchdown pass. Yeah, he does a nice job, and obviously he turned on the Jets after he caught the touchdown, but a lot of blocking up front will show the touchdown and how it occurred after the kickoff here, but give credit to some of his blockers for opening up a wide running lane. Well, Harvard has had a receiver go for 100 yards in each of its first three games. They're well on their way after that 67-yard touchdown, the top, top turbo drive of the game. It's thus far, three plays, 73 yards. It took a minute and 34 seconds, and Chris Pizzotti hooking up with the freshman Adam Chrysis for the 67-yard score. So Cornell already in a hall, already in the hole, Dale, and it's only a minute and a half in. 
Well, the coaching staff from Cornell preaches one play will not make or break you. Let's see how they respond to some adversity here early in the football game. Patrick Long to kick off. These three deep men, Brian Walters takes it at his own six. Across the 20, tries to move out of the tackle flag down on the play. But he's brought down at the 21. Wait for the call. Illegal ball in the back. Ten yards from the end of the run, first down. Let's take another look at that touchdown, Dale. Well, most long touchdown passes don't happen on your own. Rod Dreyer frees it, as you're going to see number 95 right there in the corner of your screen. That's Jason Miller. Blocks not one, not two, but gets in the way of three guys. And that allows Chris's to see the opening. And he uses his speed and athletic ability. You see blocking downfield there by Matt Luff, number 82. He will give credit to those guys as they watch film. Cornell starts from its own 13 after 63 pass attempts a week ago. Quickly Ford goes in the air and connects with the wide receiver, Brian Walters, for a gain of five. Nathan Ford, terrific athlete, also an all-Ivy selection as a baseball player as well, coming off the career day 438 yards passing a week ago. Second and five for the Big Red. And Stephen Liuza comes into the game at quarterback. Cornell will run a lot of different formations, and this is one of them. The direct snap, Liuza tries to turn the corner, and he's pushed out of bounds at the 21-yard line, a gain of three. Let's take a look at the Cornell offensive line. It has yet to allow a sack so far this season, and it's anchored by six foot six, 313-pound senior Steve Valenta. The running back is Randy Barber. They start three wide receivers, but they will run as many as eight of them on the field. Ten different players caught passes a week ago. Zach Kenny is their leading receiver, the senior. Ford back in at quarterback, third and two from the 21. Barber gets the call, and he is stopped. If he's lucky, he gets back to the line of scrimmage. So Cornell will have to punt on its first possession. Well, these are the plays that can make or break your football team. It's, you get two nice plays, put yourself in a third and short situation, you're not able to convert. Now you got to give the ball back to that potent Harvard offense. If you don't start to control the ball a little bit, if you're Cornell, this game could get out of hand in a hurry. Nick Maxwell on for his 19th punt of the season, standing at his own seven. Andrew Berry, the return specialist for Harvard. Gets it off. Berry will field it at 35. And he's brought down at about the 45-yard line. Versus college football this Thursday night, eighth-ranked BYU puts the nation's longest winning streak on the line with a special primetime Mountain West clash with TCU. Then on Saturday, it's Big 12 and Pac-10 action back-to-back. -back. First, Nebraska takes on Iowa State. Then Oregon State meets Washington versus college football. It's wild out there. A wild start here, Dale, as Harvard goes three plays and... A 67-yard touchdown pass to Adam Chrysis, the freshman, on its first drive. Let's see what they got on their second drive. That's Chrysis in motion. Pizzotti again from the shotgun. Fakes the inside handoff and completes it to Cheng Ho, who's across midfield, brought down right at midfield. Let's go back to Ted Robinson in our College Football Central Studios for a game break. Well, Rich, Oklahoma wasted no time. They took the opening kick, went 80 yards in eight plays. Sam Bradford to Manuel Johnson to put the Sooners up 7-0. Rich? Thank you very much, Ted. So lots of scoring early across the board here on this beautiful Saturday of college football, especially here in the Northeast. Temperatures expected to reach near 70 today here in Boston. The handoff to Chrysis. He gets a good block. And he's brought out of bounds at the 28-yard line by Tim Bax. So Harvard has been able to move the ball effectively against this 3-3-5 defense of Cornell. 
But look at this. Look at these guys right here. None of them are set. We're talking about this 3-3-5 defense. They're, they're a little confused. You see guys moving late. Well, guess what? You're going to see a huge hole right over there because somebody didn't find their gap. First and 10 from the 28. Pizzotti, 3 of 3 thus far, 77 yards passing. And he'll go to the air again. Some pressure, and he goes down for the third time this year. Ryan Ostrowski, the linebacker, brings him down. Well, this is the good and the bad, as we'll talk throughout the game of this 3-3-5. It can confuse an offense because you have different rules as an offensive line and pass protection. But the neat thing about defense is that whatever you call it, everyone's responsible for a gap. And if you don't get there, no matter what defense you're running, you can still give up a big play. Ninth sack of the year for Cornell. A loss of four. From the 32, Pizzotti looks, has time, and he underthrows his man, Matt Luft. So his first incompletion of the day, he had him wide open. Accuracy is something that he's worked on over his five years here at Harvard. He's a fifth-year senior. He has great accuracy, as we've seen on film to date and also in the early going, but that time not able to hook up with Luft. Well, he is in the pressure now coming from Cornell's defense, kind of settling in a little bit, kind of finding their groove. And, and getting off on the snap of the ball, putting pressure there on Pizzotti, allowing that ball to come up a little short. So it brings up a third and 14. They have to get to the 18-yard line for a first down. Levi Richards in motion. The one back is Geno Gordon. Pizzotti short pass knocked away by Mark Longo, the junior corner from Middletown, New Jersey. Very nice coverage. Good pressure again. Each snap this series, Cornell's got a little more pressure on Harvard. Great job by Longo stepping in front, knocking the ball loose, playing really good coverage downfield, breaking that pass up, forcing Harvard to at least line up in punt formation. Would have been a 49-yard attempt, perhaps a little long for Patrick Long. So Thomas Hull, the punter, comes on for the first time today. Brian Walter standing in his own 10-yard line. A high kick as we expected inside the five-yard line and downed at the two. Terrific special teams play by Harvard. So the Crimson off to a good start. The Big Red will try to change that next. They trail 7-0. Brown, Columbia, Cornell, Dartmouth, Harvard, Penn, Princeton, and Yale. Synonymous with academic and athletic excellence, the Ivies have the broadest intercollegiate programs in the country. That means more teams, sports, and student athletes than any other intercollegiate athletic conference. These men and women combine national competitive success with the best academic records in the NCAA. Experience the Ivy League yourself at ivyleaguesports.com. No matter how demanding my workout is, I'm not done until I finish it with EAS Myoplex. Taken within 30 minutes after my workout, the high quality protein in Myoplex helps me refuel and build lean muscle. That way, I don't waste my workout. Now I'm done. Grab your EAS Myoplex at a leading retailer near you, or for your free sample, go to EAS.com. If you looked at my Subaru Outback, you might think I didn't love it. But the truth is, I consider the dirt and trail dust and mud that gets splattered on it kind of a badge of honor. Who am I to wash all that away? I just let the universe take care of it. Live big, love an outback. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Welcome back, a gorgeous Saturday afternoon here in Boston at Harvard Stadium and the Crimson out to an early 7-0 lead as Chris Pisani hooks up with Adam Chrisis. If you blinked, you missed it. 67 yards on the third play of the game, and Chrisis' his first college reception goes for 67 yards and a score. Yeah, let's take a look while well, we have a chance for the keys for the game. Yeah, the Harvard keys to a victory. They have to solve that 3-3-5 defense we'll talk about. They also have to have those wide receiver replacements emerge. Chris has already shown that he can do that. Nathan Ford changing the play at the line of scrimmage. 
and he gives to Randy Barber. He picks up about one. May have gotten out to the four before he was pushed back by the Harvard defense. Glenn Doris, one of those in on the stop, the middle linebacker. Imperative that Cornell gains a first down here. Not only does it give you some field position if you have to punt, but what it does is it starts to build some confidence in your offense that you can move the ball against this Harvard defense. Two wide receivers, unlike Cornell, from what we saw a week ago. And again, Barber gets the call on the ground as they try to pick up some yards to give themselves some breathing room. He's out to the eight-yard line. Let's take a look at the keys to the game for Cornell, Dale. Well, talking to Cornell coaches and looking at game film and trying to put together how they're going to be able to win this football game. They need to find a balance. They're not going to be able to throw the ball 64 times like they did last week and win. And they're going to have to continue to protect Nate Ford so he can throw the football down the field. So far, they've done that. No sacks this year, also in part because of Ford's ability to get the ball away quickly. Third and four. For the Big Red, they have to get to the 12-yard line to keep the chains moving. Three wide receivers. Ford looks near side, throws, and Horatio Blackman took a big hit from the safety. Colin Zitch and couldn't hang on. And this was a big hit. Yes, it was a huge safety. hit. Blackman runs a nice route, good protection up front. A nice throw, but into four defenders. Any one of those had a chance, but looked like a big hit. Knocks that ball loose. Now you have to punt inside the 10-yard line. And two return men for Harvard, number 86, Alex Bro joins Andrew Berry. Nick Maxwell punting from his own end zone, about five yards deep. And Bro will take it close to midfield. And he gets about five yards on the return to the 42. Let's take a look at the Papa John's League leaders. And a good offensive matchup today between the two top teams in the Ivy League, Dale, but so far it's been all Harvard. Well, all Harvard, but you see the numbers there looking for some points to be scored, for the ball to be moving up and down the field. Obviously, Cornell's got a long way to go to get to that almost 370 yards per game they're averaging. So Harvard takes over at the Cornell 42 after a 40-yard punt. Five-yard return. Cheng Ho is the one back for the Crimson. Richards and Luff to the wide receivers. Both lined up at the bottom of your screen. Four on the game clock. They get the snap off. And Richards can't hold on. Perhaps Dale tried to make the move before he had the ball. It was right there, delivered very nicely from Bazzotti, but Richards unable to hold on. It, it, was a, it was a nice throw, nice read. What you're seeing here is Chris Bazzotti and, uh, and Tim Bax, number seven for Columbia, playing a little game of uh, a chicken there. Bax showing blitz, backing out. Pizzotti audibly into a nice play. This is going to be a nice pickup. Got to hang on to the football. Pizzotti completed his first three passes. been incomplete on the next three, and he keeps it himself this time. And he gets it to the 38-yard line. A gain of four. Brought down by Brian Ostrowski, the linebacker. Well, and to run that read option, you have to have the quarterback keep it every once in a while there, right? Yeah, Chris Pizzotti keeps the football, gains some positive yardage. He's, he's not going to wow you with his speed or, or, or his moves, but he's a capable quarterback gaining yards there on second down to put them in a very manageable third down situation. Right now he's got a third and five from the 37. Three wide receivers. Cheng Ho is the lone back. Pizzotti drops the pass again and completes for a first down. This time Richard's able to hold on. Levi Richards, you see, lined up. A little bit of a crisscross there with Jason Miller, the tight end. And enough time for Bazzotti to hang on to the football and go to a second read. Complete the football as Cornell only rushed three. Showed like they were going to blitz. Backed out. Able to complete the pass. So they move it to the 29. And Bazzotti again from the shotgun. Has time. Throws over the middle and complete to left. 
Luff brought down at the five yard line by Tim Bax, the safety. And another great read from Chris Bizzotti at all the time in the world. Well, everything starts up front. You only rush three. That means eight are dropping back, but there's still holes. Very interesting to see Cornell's game plan here early, not bringing pressure. They're a blitzing type team. They are playing a little bit more passive than, I, than we thought they would. First and goal from the four. Ho oh, the back. Bizzotti keeps it himself. Cornell all over him, though. Four white shirts bring him down. Among them was Graham Ryan, the linebacker. Nice job by Ryan saving a touchdown. That read option again. Bizzotti choosing to keep it. Saw the end zone but was tackled very quickly by Ryan. He saw it, but his legs couldn't move quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> that happens a lot, especially with guys like me. <laughs> well, and when you've got guys like uh, Graham Ryan chasing after you, you can get that. Michael Turner, the full back in. Chen Ho gets the call, straight up the middle, and he's in for the touchdown. Chen Ho, the 5'10", 190-pound junior from Augusta, Georgia. 2007 all ivy league selection his second touchdown of the season very fine blocking up front number 77 zach koppel pulling from his right guard spot just mashing up in there knocking white jerseys out of the way giving chang ho a chance to put his head down and score from the four yard line so patrick long on for the second time for the point after and this one is good once again so Harvard has scored on two of its first three drives and leads Cornell 14 to nothing in the first quarter. The Suzuki SX4 crossover gets 30 miles per gallon highway, has a pop-up Navi, available all-wheel drive, and starts under 16,000. So just because there's a gas crisis doesn't mean there has to be a fun crisis. The Suzuki SX4. Live large, drive small. Suzuki. Fear drove them to the edge. Now, terror goes into overdrive. I can't believe this is happening. Joyride 2, unrated, now available on DVD. Ah. Has the world gone mad? Jeans that cost $100, $75, $50. Jeans should fit comfortably and look good. New Lee Relax Fit are the best fitting, most comfortable jeans, guaranteed. Relax price, relax fit. Lee, get what fits. I would found an institution. I would found an institution. An institution. Where any person. Any person. Any person. Any person. Any person. Any person can find instruction. Find instruction. Instruction in any study. Any study. Any study. Any study. Welcome back. It has been all Harvard in this first quarter, which still has 536 left to play. The Crimson lead it by a score of 14 to nothing on a four yard run by Ching Ho. Well, what we talked about was Cornell not picking up third down situations. Had two third and shorts. They're in the field, not able to pick up that first down. Give Harvard great field position, and Harvard's capitalized on it. They've definitely taken advantage of everything the Cornell defense has given them thus far. And this is the first big test for the Big Red. They have been in every game thus far this year. They made a, made a point of, of being in every game. Last year they felt they were manhandled physically in just about every game they played. This year they were determined to change all of that and have off, been off to a 3-0 start. But so far, Harvard has moved the ball with ease against them. Well, the biggest thing they thought last year was they got out physical in those blowouts. Well, be interesting to see how they respond. We talked about adversity, offense, needs to come out here and move the football. And although there seems to be very little wind, somehow the ball falls off the tee. The Gremlins playing with us here with 536 left in the first quarter. Just a gorgeous day here in Boston. Not a cloud in the sky, Dale. Well, I, I don't get back here very often. Is this what it's like every October weekend in, in the Boston area? You get these every so often. We'll take it. And a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful weekend. 
Harvard already with three plays of 20 or more yards. Long the kick. And it's taken by Walters at the 15. Straight ahead has a seam. And Harvard right there. Anthony Spadafino, the safety, making the tackle. And it'll be first and 10 for Cornell. I mentioned Chang Ho is from Georgia, but his trip to Harvard has been a long one. With more on that story, here's Bob Harwood. Certainly a long and winding road, Rich. And there's a look at one of the more boisterous players, outspoken players on the Harvard lineup. Uh, surprisingly, when you consider his background, he was born in Taiwan. And of course, as a, as a kid in Taiwan, didn't get exposed to English. Uh, there was a real sense of having to learn the culture when he came over here. And I'll tell you why in a second. There's more proof of that boisterous personality. He and his sister came over when he was about 12 years old to live with their aunt and uncle in a town near Augusta, Georgia, because his mom had suffered from schizophrenia and his, died, his dad died when they were quite early as kids. So there was nowhere to call home for them in Taiwan. Obviously, it took him time for him to get a sense of the English language and to immerse himself in the sports culture in Georgia. He was a real standout eventually at Evans High School there, where his coaches are still saying he's the hardest working player they've ever had on his team. Now, Harvard did take an interest, more intrigue at the background but Tim Murphy said we've got to have this guy if he can make it in football terms and obviously he's done so and then some he's had some uh, all Ivy level recognition and really wants the ball in key matters and key times for this Harvard team one of those very resilient kids that Tim Murphy has made a point to recruit in his 15 years here at Harvard Stephen Liuza had taken that snap directly and was able to pick up a first down but a holding penalty calls things back so it is once again Cornell starting from a tough spot here, first and Mike 10. Up. Mike, do you hear about? From the 35 yard line. Ford back in at quarterback at the shotgun. And again, and fake to Luke Sawula. And he connects with Jesse Baker, the hero from last week. So 14 total yards for Cornell on its first two drives, and they pick up a first down right there. Well, and they've ran that read option a couple times. This time, quarterback Nate Ford decides to keep the ball, complete a nice pass to Baker, pick up that first first down. Always toughest to get that first first down. You see this offense now starting to click into gear just a little bit. Three wide receivers for Cornell. Ford, quick pass, and he hits Liuza. And Liuza wrapped up by Colin Zich and with the help of Andrew Berry. So we've seen Liuza already catch a pass. He's a very versatile guy. He's the backup quarterback, but he's thrown for a pass this year, caught a pass, and also run the ball. Is there anything he doesn't do? Well, the bottom line is you want to get the ball in his hands any way you can because you know he's a playmaker. You know that he's one of those guys that can take the ball the distance on any given play. So get him some touches, different ways to get the ball in his hands, and get him out in the open field. And that play covered four yards, so it's second and six from midfield as Cornell tries to get into Harvard territory for the first time today. Ford again, quick drop, and he completes to Luke Shalula, a pickup of three as he's knocked out of bounds at the 47. Luke Shalula, fifth on the school's all-time rushing list, a two-time All-Ivy Academic All-American. Nice job by Nate Ford. Harvard, here's what's interesting. Harvard comes in as we go no huddle, so we're not going to go to the replay, but interesting there, Nate Ford doing a nice job reading the blitz of Harvard, checking to a quick pass right where the blitz was coming from, able to pick up some positive yards. But not enough for a first down, so it's third and four. From the 48, so Ula the one back, and he gets the call on third down, cuts inside, enough for a first down. He's brought down at the 36 yard line. Interesting blocking scheme. You're going to see the center, Babek Motamidi, doing a nice job pulling big number 78, leading the charge here. Obviously, Luke Saiwula getting up there and getting the first down, but that offensive line doing a nice job. You don't see 300-pound center snap the ball and get out there and lead on sweeps very often. A gain of 12, Ford going deep. He's got a man, and it's intercepted by Matthew Henson, his second in as many weeks, the freshman named Ivy League Rookie of the Week last week, and another big play here. 
What a nice job. Just backing off his zone coverage. Didn't have anybody in his area. Decided he was going to back up and make a play. Matt Hansen, number three. Nobody really looks open. Tell Hansen drifts back there, does a nice job stepping in front of a very well thrown ball. Almost got broken up there. Great hands. Nice interception as Cornell's moving the ball. Gets the ball down inside their territory. Harvard's defense steps up. Fizzotti on first down. Hands off. And it'll be about a game of about four. Cheng Ho is the runner. Turnovers have been a big problem for Cornell, in particular Nathan Ford. He has now seven interceptions in three-plus games. Well, a couple of those, they said, were, were his mistakes. A couple of receivers and a couple of protection. But he does need, he's, it was improving, and he needs to continue to improve on his decision making. High backfield for Harvard. Pizzotti will throw again on second down. Now takes off, and he gets out to about the 14 yard line, a gain of about five. He'll bring up about third and four. Well, this is where you wonder Cornell's defense. Are you going to? They're going to start bringing some pressure and then try and get the ball out of Pizzotti's hands a little bit quicker, force this Harvard team to, to make a mistake down in their territory, get the ball back to your offense with good field position. Officially a third and three. Miller in motion. Ho gets the call, and he is wrapped up by Jonathan Ruck. A 6'1", 240-pound senior from Allentown, Pennsylvania. Nice job by the entire right side of the Cornell defense coming across the line of scrimmage. And when there's no movement by that offensive line, very difficult for a running back to pick up a first down on third and short. So the turnover doesn't come back to haunt Cornell as Harvard will punt with Thomas Hull standing on his own goal line. Brian Walters is the return man for Cornell. High kick, and Walters calls for a fair catch at about the 45-yard line. Let's take a look at the EAS Energy Drink player profile. And our profile is of Matt Curtis, the Harvard defensive tackle, currently leading the Ivy League with five and a half tackles for a loss. He is the senior captain of this team and another great story we'll have more on him as the afternoon goes on but a first team all Ivy League selection a year ago and the 135th captain of Harvard football and 6'2", 255 pounds bench presses 450 and runs a 4640 unbelievable numbers three wide receivers the lone back is Barber and he gets it on first down and he is wrapped up at the 47-yard line, perhaps a gain of two. Brenton Bryant among those in on the tackle. But Matt Curtis, you talk about a guy that is fortunate to have everything he has right now. Grew up in a broken home, raised in foster homes by relatives, older sister, his parents. His father passed away of cancer. His mother has battled substance abuse, and it has been a tough journey here for Matt Curtis, who has made most of everything he has been given here by this university. Second and nine from the 47. Three-step drop for four. Out to Scanty, but the play read very well by Andrew Berry, the All-Ivy League selection at cornerback. Nice job by Berry there. This Cornell defensive backfield does a nice job of when the ball's in the air leaving their responsibility and coming over and making a play. I mean, you had the interception earlier, then you have Barry there dropping off of his primary coverage. Defensive backs do a nice job with ball awareness and consequently you complete a ball, but you don't get those big gains because you've got a bunch of guys coming to the football. The Harvard defense has been very quick to the ball, both on offense and defense. And a Crimson lead, 14-0 after one, right here on Versus. At TIAA CREF, we provide financial solutions for those who serve the greater good. We offer personalized objective advice, a commitment to consistent growth, low fees, and guaranteed income for life. Put our retirement expertise to work for you. Call today. TIAA-CREF, financial services for the greater good. 
ever complained about burning the midnight oil? Never held the title, world's number one dad. And for a job well done, you need a tool well built. More torque, greater comfort. The Craftsman Cross Force Ratchet Wrench. One more Craftsman tool, guaranteed for life. For tools and advice, visit the Garage of Knowledge at Craftsman.com. There's a Craftsman in all of us. Introducing the all-new Nissan Maxima. It has an award-winning 290 horsepower V6 engine, an intelligent CVT transmission, and a masterfully crafted interior designed around the driver. The breathtaking Nissan Maxima, the four-door sports car. Lease a new 2009 Nissan Maxima for $339 a month for 39 months. Want to get strong? Want to get lean? Want to get ripped? Well, now you can with Iron Gym. Iron Gym turns any door into your own personal gym in just seconds. Its unique design wraps around your door frame and uses leverage, so there's no screws and no damage to your door. Start off with chin-ups and pull-ups to develop and strengthen your shoulders, arms, back, and lats. And with three different grip positions, narrow grip, wide grip, and neutral, you can switch up your routine and keep challenging your muscles. But we're not finished there. Take it to the floor for deep push-ups, and it's a sturdy base for tricep dips. Then finish off with gut-busting crunches. In just minutes a day, you'll build lean muscle and get ripped. Order Iron Gym today for just two payments of $29.99. You'll also get these hanging ab straps for an explosive abdominal workout. But call right now and we'll cut the price in half. That's Iron Gym with hanging ab straps for just one payment of $29.99. But you've got to call now. On third and three, four, quick out to Jesse Baker. And it's going to be close. Looks like he has enough for a first down. He's knocked out of bounds at the 43. And it is enough for a first down indeed. So important to pick up those third downs. It keeps drives alive, gives you more plays, helps you get into a rhythm, gets you on their side of the 50-yard line. Impaired that Cornell comes away with points on this drive just to gain some confidence. In the first quarter alone, they were outgained by Harvard, 146 yards to just 60. Ford fakes, and Brenton Bryan read it beautifully and knocks it down. So they bring up second down and 10. But 146 yards for Harvard in the opening quarter. Well, and you take away, you, you take that first touchdown away. Obviously, Chris does a, a nice job, but you, you talk about an offense coming out and jumping on you. Chris's first catch, 67 yards. That'll help any <laughs> uh, any average you put out there. 146 yards in the opening quarter after over 400 a week ago for the Crimson, who lead at 14-0. On second and 10, Ford, deep drop. Pressure comes. He's able to get away and dumps it off in a big hit. But the tailback, Randy Barber, able to hold on. Nice job as he was just leveled on that play. Sonny McCracken in on the hit. Nice job eluding pressure there by Nate Ford. And wow, what a hit. My goodness, Harvard has played some clicks very early in this football game, set the tone to try and say they are going to be more physical than you. A gain of six brings up third and four. Ford to the outside. It's caught by Horatio Blackman for a first down. And the chains continue to move, and after a rough start on its first two drives that resulted in punts, Cornell finally able to move the ball a little. The last drive, they were intercepted by Matthew Hansen, but again, able to move the ball as Steven Liuza now comes in to play quarterback on first down for Cornell at the Harvard 29. Three wide receivers all on the near side. Lyuza takes the direct snap and takes off. He turns the corner, leaps over Hanson and out of bounds for a first down, a flag on the play. We'll see with the call, but you saw the athleticism right there of Lyuza. 
Jim Knowles talked to us about it earlier in the week, saying they have to get him on the field because he could be a factor. Personal foul, late hit out of bounds on the defense. Number four, half the distance to the goal. First down. Well, these are the kind of things that Cornell needs to happen offensively. Get the ball in your playmaker's hands. Freeze it right there. Watch big number 78 doing a nice job. Lead blocking again, pulling to his right, pulling to his left. You see the late hit there on Liuza. Liuza showing his athletic ability, leaping over defenders, getting the first down. And the unsportsmanlike conduct brings it down to the nine yard line. Liuza again takes off, and Colin Zitz runs him down and may have saved a touchdown. Well, he definitely saved a touchdown, but again, the athleticism of Liuza. Hey, we watched film yesterday, didn't see a whole lot of this, but this play was designed to go to the left. Watch everybody come to the left. Well, you know what? There's nobody there, but he has the quickness and the vision and the feel to say, I have a chance of getting out the back door, almost gets into the end zone, but picks up some positive yards. Nathan Ford back under center right now. Second and two from the two. Barber, the tailback gets in for the first big red touchdown of the day. His third touchdown of the year, and the Harvard lead could be cut in half if the point after is successful. I can't tell you how important that drive was for Cornell. Great job by Barber finding a way, finding a way to knife into the end zone. Harvard had him all guessed pretty well covered up. Barber turns his shoulder sideways, gets six points. And Brad Greenway on for the point after. It is good. So Cornell gets on the board in the early moments of the second quarter and trails Harvard 14 to 7 on the two yard run by Randy Barber. Nine plays. This is the world's most powerful ATV. It has the best power steering, the highest horsepower, the smoothest ride, the largest wheels the highest clearance, and the most pulling power. Introducing the Polaris Sportsman XP, the world's most powerful ATV. Darren, Papa John's is here. Everyone's excited for this year's biggest adventure. The big taste of the XL Explorer Pizza. 30% bigger than our large. With your choice of any three toppings. A big deal at $13.99. Plus, get a $3 off coupon for Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull on DVD. Call or click PapaJohns.com. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. I would found an institution. I would found an institution. An institution. Where any person. Any person. Any person. Any person. Any person. Can find instruction. Find instruction. Instruction. In any study. Any study. Any study. Any study. Welcome back. Some life for the Big Red of Cornell after the Randy Barber two yard run. A terrific drive by Cornell. Nine plays, 54 yards, capped by the Barber touchdown run. Nice job. Very important for Cornell's offense to come back and respond. They did that. Defenses already feel a little bit better about themselves. They went three and out on the opening drive. Now it's up to the defense, as you mentioned, to try to stop this Harvard offense, which was. Very potent in that first quarter, picking up 146 total yards. So much so far in this game has been based on field position. Harvard obviously scores a long touchdown from 67 yards out, but the next one, short field. Cornell here played good defense, got a short field, took advantage of it. Cornell set to kick off. Brad Greenway will handle the duties. Cheng Ho and Ben Jenkins, the two tailbacks, are the deep men. Standing at their own seven yard line. And a short kick taken by Jenkins at the 20. 
And he's cut down by Tim Bax at the 28-yard line. So some life for Cornell. We saw one of the motivational tools of Jim Knowles earlier. Bob Harwood has more on another one. I think, I think, Rich, it comes down to perspective and maturity on, on his part, certainly, but on the expectations of his team. I spent a bit of time on the sideline with Cornell when they were down 7 nothing, shockingly early, and I've got to tell you, the mood was still surprisingly very upbeat, and I guess that's 33 seniors understanding the message of the lows not being too low and the highs not being too high. He talked about that with us earlier this week and said, I've got to set that tone, and my guys have to pick it up as well, that the 60 minutes is a lot of time to bounce back, even from a tough start like this one. On first down, Pizarro he looks, goes over the middle, and Richards could not hold on, but may have heard some footsteps there. There were three big red defenders, including Chris Costello, the linebacker, and Tim Bax, the safety. Nice job by Chris Costello running down the field. I mean, obviously outmatched in speed a little bit, but able to stay with Levi Richards running right down the seam. Chris Costello, one of those linebackers, playing really well for this Cornell defense. Second and ten for the Crimson. Pizzotti looks to pass again and finds Luft at the 35-yard line. He's brought down by Frank Moran. You can just see this Cornell defense playing with a little more speed, a little more confidence, more white jerseys around the football. Wouldn't be surprised as they start to feel more comfortable. You don't see more pressure coming, more blitzes. That's that 3-3-5 defense. We'll talk about as the game goes on, but what it allows you to do is blitz from all different angles. Short third and two for Harvard. Pizzotti under pressure, and he goes down the second sack of the day for the Cornell defense. And Gus Prim, the rover, brought down Pizzotti. Looked like he had enough time there. Prim coming off the left edge. You're going to see this blitz coming. Watch as it comes in late. Good coverage. Should Ball should have been gone, but able to beat the block there by number 85. Schwarzkopf get in there and again give this team good field position. You see the blitzing taking its toll on that Harvard offensive line. High snap. Able to get the punt off, though. And Brian Walters will let it bounce. And it takes a Harvard roll, and it will be down at the 25-yard line. The NHL is on versus next week. Monday, our first visit to Washington, where Alex Ovechkin and the Caps take on Roberto Longo and the Canucks. Then on Tuesday, a rematch of last year's Eastern Conference Finals, when Crosby's Penguins and Breer's Flyers drop the puck in the Steel City. The NHL on versus next week. And I know Bob Harwood was watching the other night, where Harvard product Dominic Moore had a goal for the Toronto Maple Leafs in there went over the Red Wings, Bob. And I mentioned to him that I'd be here, and he said, say hello to everybody who followed his career when he was wearing the colors. Obviously, Washington, a team to watch, fellas. They're explosive. They've got one of the most uh, emotionally charged young players in the game and the reigning MVP in Alex Ovechkin. Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, that's a blood rivalry as well. It's tremendous action on versus coming up next week. And Lyuza took the snap, but this time Peter Ajay right there to greet him, and a big loss of 12 on the play. Number 50, Peter Ajay, not giving up on the play, not giving up contain. We've seen Lyuza run all over the football field, was not able to escape the grasp of Peter Ajay, who the coaching staff had mentioned. One of those guys playing pretty good from his defensive line position. Well, so far, the few times Lyuza has taken the snap, he's taken off. Is that something that, that Harvard has has figured out at this point until he until he attempts a pass as Nathan Ford back in there now and it will attempt to pass and he goes deep downfield and it's caught by the senior Zach Kenny and he's shaken up on the play slow to get up took a hard hit tough throw even a tougher catch you know you're going to take a lick and be able to concentrate on the football very nice throw by Nate Ford right down the seam Zach Canty Concentrating on the football, you're going to see right there three converging Harvard defenders able to hang on to the football and pick up. And can't be able to walk off the field, fortunately. That hit late may have caught a knee to the head. Connor Murphy, one of the linebackers, coming over to make the play. Been very impressed early in this football game. A lot of hard hitting going on by both football teams. Go, 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 
It is still third down and two for Cornell and Barber will try to pick up that first down. He is wrapped up. It's going to be close. It looks like he's short from our vantage point. Well, that's what we talked about. Scoring drive, they pick up third downs. They pick up third downs. Non-scoring drives, they're three downs and out. And what that does, that gives their defense no time to rest. Harvard over there chomping at the bit, ready to get on the football field. And he was, in fact, short. So Nick Maxwell on once again due to the punting. Maxwell gets the snap and gets it off easily, a short kick. Barry lets it bounce at the 45 where it is downed. And Cornell thinking that they didn't touch it, but it certainly it looked like they did. But their case is correct because Harvard will take over from the 35 when we return up 14 to 7. No matter how demanding my workout is, I'm not done until I finish it with EAS Myoplex. Taken within 30 minutes after my workout, the high quality protein in Myoplex helps me refuel and build lean muscle. That way, I don't waste my workout. Now I'm done. Grab your EAS Myoplex at a leading retailer near you, or for your free sample, go to EAS.com. Now you can get extra cash. Recycle your old gold that's gathering dust. Call the number on your screen for quick cash. The gold kit is absolutely free. Send broken and outdated items like old rings, charms, chains, and more. I got $1,000 for my old gold jewelry. It's safe, it's fast, it's easy, and the gold kit is free. We'll mail you a free personalized gold kit for safe shipping in our new virtually indestructible TrueTech mailer for maximum protection. Your check will follow promptly. I called and got my free gold kit. I sent in my jewelry and they sent me my check. The gold kit and postage are free. Your satisfaction, guaranteed. Here's how it works. Call for your free gold kit, then gather your old gold jewelry, send it in the free postage paid TrueTech mailer, and get your cash fast. I'm going on vacation with the money I got for my old gold jewelry. Don't wait. Take your old gold jewelry and turn it into cash now. Call the number on your screen now or visit goldkit.com. Ivy League Game of the Week, presented by TIAA Cref on Versus, is brought to you by TIAA Cref, financial services for the greater good. Historic Boston on a beautiful Indian summer Saturday afternoon. Glad you could be with us. Rich Ackerman along with Dale Hellestray. 9-11 left. First half and Harvard leads Cornell by a score of 14-7. And after a little conference between the officials, Dale, they have decided to spot it at the 44-yard line where it hit. It was a punt of 22 yards. So Chris Pizzotti, five for eight thus far, comes back out of the field for Harvard. He's got one back, and it's Geno Gordon. Miller in motion. The give to Gordon. Through the hole, and close to a first down for Geno Gordon. Geno Gordon had started the first three games of the season. 178 yards on the season, including 53 last week and a touchdown. And right there, picks up a first down. Well, you Beautiful got, run. You got to like the way that Harvard's offense is mixing it up. I mean, they're, they're throwing the football there. They've got a couple new plays in there. They're handing the ball off. This offensive line coming off the football over the left side, doing a very nice job keeping Cornell off balance. And it's Gordon again, but this time he's lucky if he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Let's go to Ted Robinson standing by in the studios. Now Rich, more action from Dallas. Oklahoma's Sam Bradford threw a second straight touchdown pass, but then Jordan Shipley of Texas returns the kick 96 yards for a Texas score, 14-10 Oklahoma. Rich? Thank you very much, Ted. Our score right here, Harvard leads Cornell by a score of 14-7. A little over eight minutes left in the first half. And no gain on that last run by Gordon. So second and 10 from the 45. And Gordon this time able to get about two. So it'll bring up a third and long for Chris Pizzotti and Harvard. Well, nice job by Tim Bax, number seven from Cornell coming up and hitting him in the backfield, knocking Gordon for a loss. But 
again, guessing sometimes this Harvard offense is, and other times they'll say, you know what, we call it green. That means we go. That means that no matter what the defense is, we can run that play and not get hurt too bad. That was a green call. Tim Bax came up and made a nice play. Third and eight, Gordon remains the lone back. Three wide receivers for Harvard. And the inside handoff to Gordon in a big hole. And it looks like it's enough for a first down. So Cornell, which has been very stingy against the run, allowing two first downs on the run on this drive by Harvard. Well, third down and long, and you gave up a big run and missed tackles, and those are the things that are going to drive the coaching staff crazy. You get your arms wrapped around a running back, he needs to be on the ground. They've allowed an average of 37 net yards rushing a game, almost that on this drive alone. Pizzotti, that time connects with his tight end, Nikolai Schwarzkopf. Nice route, nice catch by Schwarzkopf. Good protection up front as this Cornell defense playing very, very soft. You see just one blitz, so you got four-man rush. Able to stand back there. Pretty good coverage downfield, but a better route. You see Frank uh, Moran there on the coverage, but better route by Schwarzkopf and a nice catch. Another first down, this time from the 21. Pizzotti to the air again, has a man. Levi Richards complete for a touchdown. Beautifully done from Pizzotti to Richards, and it's 20-7, to Harvard. Richards had some problems with some drops earlier, but that one right on the money, and he was wide open. Tell you what, he ran a post corner route as well as you possibly can if you're a wide receiver. He completely turned around, fake Frank Moran, wide open in the corner of the end zone on a picture-perfect pass from Chris Pizzotti. Patrick Long on for the point after, out of the hold of Andrew Berry. And once again, it is good. 21-7, Harvard leads. Great protection up front. Pizzotti pulls back, fires in the end zone. Nobody in the picture, 21-7, Harvard. Brown, Columbia, Cornell, Dartmouth, Harvard, Penn, Princeton, and Yale. Synonymous with academic and athletic excellence, the Ivies have the broadest intercollegiate programs in the country. That means more teams, sports, and student athletes than any other intercollegiate athletic conference. These men and women combine national competitive success with the best academic records in the NCAA. Experience the Ivy League yourself at ivyleaguesports.com. Be transformed by colors so vibrant they twist the very fabric of your being. And sounds so pure you don't just hear them, you become them. By a world so beyond anything you've ever experienced, nothing will ever be the same. The new Kuro, now blacker than ever. Will Marias pass the torch to Marchie? The PBR on Versus, tonight and tomorrow at 8. BYU has the nation's longest winning streak, a Heisman Trophy candidate, and national title aspirations. But the only guarantee is that there are no guarantees. BYU, TCU, versus college football, Thursday. And College Football Central, Ted Robinson, Roland Williams will join me in a few moments for the Craftsman Halftime Report, where we'll check in on the big game of the day between OU and Texas. Yale and Dartmouth also playing in the Ivy. We'll have highlights and Rose headlines on the featured games on a big Saturday in college football. All on the Craftsman Halftime Report coming up. Now back to Rich and Dale. Thank you very much, Ted Robinson. 6.43 remaining here until halftime. And I know the Red River rivalry is something – you were close to living in Dallas all those years playing for the Cowboys, Dale? Always interesting because when we would tend to have a home game with the Cowboys that same weekend, we'd always be checking into our hotel the afternoon that the Sooners were checking out. Always a fun, fun weekend to be around Dallas and that state fair. The Cotton Bowl is jumping, I'm sure. As Long kicks this one off. And it's a good kick taken by Walters. 
in his end zone, and he decides to take a knee very smartly. Let's head down to the sidelines. Bob Harwood standing by with an injury update. Bob? Rich, we're talking about Zach Candy, who was banged up just a few minutes ago. Cornell wide receiver probably won't see him again until the end of the first half and the start of the second. Coaches did, or at least the uh, medical staff, went through a full head injury protocol. Check the eyes, check the uh, sensations at the end of the fingertips and the feet and the neck mobility as well. It's erring on the side of precaution right now and making sure that uh, he doesn't rush back in. We'll have the update as the uh, second half gets underway. Thank you very much, Bob. First and 10 from the 20 yard line for Cornell, which is down 21 to 7. Saula gets a big hole, and he's out close to the 30 yard line, a pickup of about eight on the play, Dale. Saula doing a nice job setting up his blocks. He had big, big Fabek, uh, Motamidi again leading the charge there from a center position. Tough name to spit out, but he is a big man, and he's even a better blocker. Snaps the ball, pulls around his guard, and it, I can't emphasize how difficult that is as a center, and yet he's doing it play after play. How do you think the announcers felt when they saw Hellestray? Well, say? you know what? It's, hey, it's, it's pronounced it like it's spelled. <laughs> <laughs> On second and two, three-step drop for Ford, and he can't connect with Brian Walters. I think Brian Walters was a little bit surprised that that football was coming at him, and this puts Cornell's offense again in that situation of third down. And it seems like every time they don't pick up that third down, Harvard immediately goes down and scores. So you need somehow, some way to keep this drive alive, try and get points on the board. Third and two, the Big Red already have been on uh, this point six times on third downs. They converted three of them thus far. Ford fakes the pass. And the give is for Sewell up the middle. Nice run for a first down and more. So the fifth all-time leading rusher in school history with a nice gain on that one. Out to the 45-yard line. And a gain of 17 on the play. Watch the fake by Nate Ford right there. Draw the defensive backs and linebackers over to the right side to give the ball to Sewula through a large opening there on the right side of the offensive line. Give credit to Bernard and Bowl. Opening up a nice hole, picking up that important first down. Sean Hayes, the linebacker, finally able to make the tackle and bring him down. But a nice run by Sewula, who was also able to shed a tackler on that one. On first and 10, Ford gets the pressure and goes down the first time this year. And Matt Curtis with the sack. Beautifully done. Great explosion by Curtis through the line. We do have a flag. Shift. Offense, number 81. That penalty will be declined. Bring up second down. So a legal shift the call. Matt Curtis comes up with the sack, but I'm going to tell you right over here is where the pressure comes, and that's where they're looking to throw the football. Curtis comes from his nose guard position, fights through a double team. Relentless pressure from number 91, guy we talked about early. Bench presses 450 pounds and runs a 4'6. Wow. And we have some movement on the line. Flags flying on the second and 17. Matt, ball start. Number 64, offense. Five yards, remain second down. So the second penalty already in the last two plays for Cornell. The false start follows the illegal shift. Well, that puts obviously the offense in a hole and gets Cornell out of moving the chains. They are not very, they don't, ex, aren't excited about second and 25 to try and pick up a first down. And they'll run the ball to try to pick up some positive yardage. Sawula able to get out to about the 35. They'll pick up two. So it'll be third down and 20. If you're sitting here watching as a fan, you're saying Cornell's got to keep the football because you do not want to give Harvard one more chance here at the end of this half with a little over four minutes left to drive down and make this a 28 to seven football game going into halftime. They must get to the Harvard 45 for a first down. Cornell four of seven now on third down. Four wide receivers from the shotgun. Ford pressured again and brought down once again. Ryan Burkhead in on the tackle, the junior from Plano, Texas. So another guy who has emerged here with some injuries 
to this line for the Crimson and a beautifully job beautifully done by Ryan Burkett. Burkett does a nice job. You think that you have max protection three man rush but Burkett gets in there late but never um, 50 is the guy who gets the sack and that is Peter Ajay. Peter Ajay. And on third down and long they went with the quick kick. So, so quick. We did see it and give the ball back to Harvard. With great field position. Try to catch everybody off guard. There's no huddle and there's quick kicks. With 346 left in the first half. We've seen a lot so far. A couple of touchdown receptions. Adam Chris has started things off with the first reception of his collegiate career. 67 yards from Chris Pizzotti, who later added a 21-yard strike to Levi Richards. First and 10 from the 42. Fakes the handoff to Ho. Lots of time. Good coverage downfield. And Pizzotti's going to dump it off to his tight end, Jason Miller. Let's go back to Ted Robinson in the studios for another update. Oh, Rich, another show being put on by Oklahoma's Sam Bradford. Right back to Jermaine Gresham here, 52 yards for a score. Bradford is 14 of 16 for 210 and three touchdowns, and it's still the first half, Rich. Thank you very much, Ted. A big game in terms of national championship implications, and perhaps also with Sam Bradford and Colt McCoy Heisman Trophy implications as well. An exciting one there. It's been a good one here as Ho takes the handoff and gets down to the 35-yard line. Close to a first down. Well, that's one of those plays on the previous play. It's kind of a, just going to, Pizzotti just flips it out to the tight end. Thinks, okay, you know what? You gained one or two yards. Well, he did. He gained seven. Very short uh, down and distance on second down. You have the football off, you get the first down. And another first down as Pizzotti will work with three wide receivers. Cheng Ho, the lone back. Pizzotti looks near side, doesn't have much, and he's run out of bounds by the linebacker Chris Costello. So Pizzotti smartly holds on to that one as it was good coverage downfield. Very good coverage downfield. He had enough time to throw the football, got to look at every receiver that was downfield. Nobody open. Cornell's defensive backs doing a pretty good job with the lack of uh, defensive pressure up front. Surprised that they are playing um, as passive as they are this first half. Pizzotti, among his many attributes, the Harvard staff, uh, Harvard staff talks about his ability to make the right decisions. And right there, he certainly did. Pizzotti will throw as a man in left, and he overthrows him not by much. He had the step on uh, Frank Moran, but couldn't connect on the pass from Pizzotti. Well, Cornell puts a lot of pressure on their cornerbacks when they blitz. They've done that all year long. They said they weren't going to change anything up. They are who they are right there. Brought a little blitz. Ball has to come out early. Puts pressure on your quarterback. But Frank Moran does a nice job running one on one in defensive back coverage. So it brings up a third and nine from the 29 for Harvard. They go with three wide receivers once again. Ho standing next to Pizzotti, fakes the handoff, quick out, and it's Chrisus. This time comes up short of the end zone, picks up a couple. It won't be enough for a first down, though. Well, it was not going to be enough for a first down, not, not going to be a touchdown because number 55, Chris Costello, the middle linebacker, came over and put a lick in on him. Nice job reading that play, getting over there before Chrisus could get a full head of steam, getting him down on the ground, forcing a field goal attempt. By Harvey. Patrick Long, who connected from 45 last week, will go for 41 yards here out of the hold of Barry. The kick is up. And it is no good. Wide to the left. So Cornell will take over. You know, Dell, with two prestigious universities, it's not surprising that they have turned out some pretty good alumni over the years. How about that? A who's who list. My five, goodness. Five presidents. Somehow we're not on that list. <laughs> I think our Cornell, our, our, uh, our degrees from Cornell and Harvard are lost in the mail somewhere. Some more alumni that you might be familiar with. Tommy Lee Jones played football here. Now, what, who doesn't fit? I mean, 
Conan O'Brien? Are you kidding me? He's on that list. He he's, follows the presidential. He's, he's very entertaining. My goodness. Somebody's got to provide humor, and Conan <laughs> O'Brien is that guy and does it well. Out of the shotgun on first down, Ford looking for a receiver, can't find one. Looking, and finally has it intercepted by Glenn Doris. It was deflected, and the senior linebacker came up with it. Second interception of the day for Nathan Ford. Well, and that's one of those poor decisions that the coaching staff does not like out of Nate Ford. Trying to buy time, pretty good protection right now. Nobody open downfield, rolls out to his right. Still nobody open right here. Nate just get out of bounds, tries to fit it in there. Great job by number 27, Colin Zitch, tipping the ball, and then better hands by Glenn Doris, catching the football and coming down in bounds. And a personal foul on the play, so Harvard with an outstanding opportunity after long missing just moments ago for the first time this year. He was a perfect five for five, but they have a chance to put some more points on the board before the half, a minute 12 left here. And they lead it by a score of 21 to 7. Very disheartening if you're Cornell because you hey, defense is okay. We got off the field. We did, didn't give up points on the last drive. Here you are back on the field one play later. The tight end Nikolai Schwartzkoff is the blocking back. And it goes to Ho and a reverse. Chrisis gets around the outside, going to the end zone, and he's got his second touchdown of the day. He played in only three plays at the end of the game last week. His first big game today, and he has come through with two touchdowns in this first half. What a well-designed play. Chris has more speed than I think we thought he did. He stepped in and done just fine today. What a call by that Harvard coaching staff. Taking advantage of Cornell's over-pursuit, run the reverse. Nice blocks downfield, including the quarterback, Pizzotti, getting the end zone for Chris. So the turnover costly, and Long will give the Crimson one more point, and it's 28 to 7 with 103 left in the first half. Chris is going to come from the left screen, left part of your screen here. Look at the lead block, and Pizzotti getting a hand on somebody. You got big number, big number 60, DeAndre Skoll downfield. A lot of red jerseys, putting a hat on a hat, and then you've got a little burst to the end zone there by Adam Chrisus. Alex Spizak with a nice block, and Chrisus with a nose for the end zone. So after a 67-yard reception to open the scoring today, comes in with the reverse there, 22 yards, to put Harvard in front by 21. Well, it, it, it just crushes you as a football team. When it's 21 to 7, you get the ball back. Your coaching staff is telling you, we need to try and move the ball, but be very careful. Don't throw the ball into coverage because we'll be fine going in 21 7. We, we, we can come back from that. First play out of the gate, your quarterback throws an ill advised pass, gets intercepted, and Harvard, as a good a football teams will do, takes advantage of it and scores on the very next play. 21 point lead for the Crimson. A huge deficit for the Big Red to overcome. Playing on the road here in Boston today. Try to set up the big return. Barber takes it at the 11. And he gets across the 30-yard line brought down at the 32. This Tuesday, the soup is on as Versus debuts its new original series, Sports Soup, hosted by comedian Matt Eisman. Featuring the week's best highlights, lowlights, and everything in between, it's the hilarious show that sports writes. Sports Soup premieres this Tuesday right after the Flyers take on the Penguins right here on Versus. A lot of highlights, some lowlights in this first half, which has less than a minute left, Dale Hellestray, but it has been a big day for the Crimson thus far. They've done a nice job in all phases of the game controlling this game. Four wide receivers here for Cornell on first down. Ford to throw, finds Baker, and he is leveled and he couldn't hold on. Andrew Berry there to break it up. Cornell likes to run a lot of these crossing routes. What that does is it puts your receivers in harm's way. You've got some guys wanting to take your head off right there. Number four, Andrew Berry, just sitting in his zone, waiting for somebody to come there. Nice job by the Harvard defense, making sure if you're a wide receiver, you might want to have your head on a swivel. 
Second down from the shotgun Ford again looking deep going for Walters some contact Walters can't hold on he was obviously looking for a flag but doesn't get it. Derek Barker among those on the coverage 33 and one the Crimson since 2003 when leading in halftime and this is the largest deficit of the season for the Big Red. They have a big mountain to climb here in Boston this afternoon. Well they've always they preach it's a four quarter game. I, I, their confidence is shaking a little bit but I have a feeling they're going at halftime. Be interesting to see what adjustments they can make to try and put some points on the board early. Ford to pass on third and ten finds Baker and Glenn Doris is right there and it's going to be well short of a first down so with 30 seconds left in this first half. Well, I'd be surprised if Harvard doesn't call time out here to at least make them snap for a punt because it is going to be fourth down. Well turnovers have not been a problem for the Big Red this year. Their turnover margin last year was minus 19. They came into today plus one but two interceptions in this first half and they have turned it over late in this first half leading to a touchdown and it has been quite a first half for the Crimson. Harvard's done a nice job right off the bat. Chris has gets the ball some nice blocking takes it down scores the touchdown making it look very very easy then taking advantage of a short field driving the ball down score a touchdown by Chang Ho. Nice throw nice catch what a great route there by number 15 Levi Richards and then last time they had the ball Chris is on the reverse taking advantage of another Cornell turn. So Cornell will try to kick it away from Adam Berry. And to fake Luke Sewula gets the pass from the punter Nick Maxwell. Well that's the thing that will drive you crazy. Down. Drive you crazy if you're a coach because the punter gets the ball out in front of Sewulu just a little bit. He had nothing but open field in front of him. You're going to see a little bit of <laughs> disgust on that coach's step. Get the ball out in front of him. He's still running. But he went down and it's first and 10 from the 43. Ford finds Canty who's back in the game after taking a big hit early. He gets inside Harvard territory and is brought down by Eric Schultz. 1.5 seconds left and Cornell's going to call a timeout. Remember, in college, the clock stops every time you get a first down for them to line up the first down chains. So we take a look at the Ivy League standings. Cornell, after a big start to the season, at 3 0, including a win over Yale, sitting atop right now. But Harvard, after a loss to Brown, has had something to say in this first half and looking for a second consecutive Ivy League championship. And this would go a long way towards catapulting them towards that second Ivy League champion. Yeah, do you throw it up for grabs here with one second left? Or well, do you try it, maybe a hook and lateral? Well, I think the only reason you call a timeout here is you're going to you're going to throw it towards the end zone. So the, the defense that Harvard's playing, they'll allow you to gain 20, 30 yards on a hook and ladder. They're not going to be super aggressive. Uh, you got to throw it up. Hope somebody tips it up in the air. If you're Harvard, the one thing that I'm always telling. Defensive backs knock the ball down. Don't try and intercept it. Knock the ball down. Get into halftime. Cornell was successful last week on its final drive and to win the game with a pass into the end zone. Ford will put it up. It's complete to Tommy Blameyer. Now he laterals to Liuza, who's brought down at the 26. And that'll do it for the first half. 73rd meeting between the two schools. Harvard has won 38 of them. And the Crimson have a big lead here, leading by a score of 28 to 7 over Cornell at the break. It has been a first half that has been all Crimson, Dale Hellestray, as we saw the touchdowns just a moment ago. They have come out storming. A big 67 yard pass play on the third reception of the game has set the tone in this first half for Harvard. Rich, what they did is they took advantage of everything Cornell gave them and what scored. 
touchdowns, not field goals. If you're Harvard, you couldn't have drawn up a more picture-perfect first half. Be interesting as we while going to halftime, what happens coming out in the third quarter? Can Cornell make some adjustments? Let's go down to the sidelines. Bob Harwood is standing by with Harvard head coach Tim Murphy. Thanks a lot, Rich. Uh, coach, you went to a young player, relatively unproven early, and you've done so in a lot of different ways since then. How easy is that choice involving an Adam Christmas like that? Well, we didn't have much choice. We've lost three, our three of our four best receivers. We knew that Levi and Adam would have to step up, and kids did a great job. It's a very big lead for a team that's obviously trying to find confidence again. Uh, what do you address early in the second half to make sure intensity stays up? I think the big thing is that this is a good football team. We've got a long way to go. We've got to put them away just keep playing football. Coach, thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, Rich. Thank you very much, Bob Harwood. A simple plan of attack for Harvard head coach Tim Murphy. He talked about players emerging. Adam Chrisa certainly did that in the first half with a couple of touchdowns. Harvard leads at 28-7. When we come back, we'll join Ted Robinson in the studio with the Craftsman Halftime Report right here on Versus. No matter how large the task or how small the company, Waste management offers big ideas for every size business. From everyday collection to environmental protection, think green, think waste management. If you looked at my Subaru Outback, you might think I didn't love it. But the truth is, I consider the dirt and trail dust and mud that gets splattered on it kind of a badge of honor. Who am I to wash all that away? Just let the universe take care of it. Live big, love an outback. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Got a lot of projects? Yeah. We've got what you need. We're here because we've been there with the tools, products, and advice to get it done right. True Value. Start right. Start here. Visit TrueValue.com slash TV for a free $5 coupon. Print your $5 coupon at TrueValue.com slash TV. Q Horsepower is here. And no leading synthetic oil delivers more power than Q Horsepower. Unleash all your horses. When you have chronic bronchitis and emphysema, also known as COPD, sometimes your breathing can make you cut back on doing things you enjoy. But wouldn't it be great if you could get information from COPD experts that could help you breathe better? That's why we created the Guide to Better Breathing for people diagnosed with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, including current and former smokers. The guide gives you pages of practical tips and treatment information, including getting the most out of your next doctor visit, all from experts in the fields of medicine, respiratory therapy, nutrition, and fitness. You'll learn simple exercises that can help improve your upper body strength. This and other techniques found in the guide can help make a real difference when doing other activities too. Start getting back to what you enjoy. Get the guide to better breathing, as well as information on a prescription treatment option. Call 1-800-418-6398 or visit copdguide19.com today. The Craftsman Halftime Report, Harvard landed on Cornell. They saw the Ivy standings there just before the half row, and so you can see Harvard and Yale, who were both picked, they were picked uh, by eight members each in the preseason media poll. They both can't afford to lose anymore, and Harvard's playing that way. Yeah, I think they're showing us why they're the defending champions. The passing game was awesome, really getting the ball to all their receivers. I like that when they're throwing it to everybody. All right, well, it was a great performance by Harvard's offense in the first half. We've also, out of the corner of our eye, we're watching another <laughs> incredible offensive show going on in the showdown between Texas and OU. They play almost halfway between the campuses at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, and it's Sam Bradford and Colt McCoy 
living up to billing so far. Oklahoma took the opening kickoff row right down the field in eight plays. Yeah, can you believe that it's been five years since they've been number one in the country? They started out explosive, getting the ball to everybody. Sam Bradford showing us why he's uh, one of the premier quarterbacks in college football. How about that little bobble from Gresham to Broyles for a touchdown, but then Jordan Shipley come back in a hurry, 96 yards. Now Jermaine Gresham doesn't drop this one. No, these guys are explosive, especially at the beginning of the game. They outscore people 103 to 3 in the first half. These guys are just truly explosive, and it's just an exciting offense to watch. That put Oklahoma up 21 10, but then McCoy came back, engineered a drive. Cody Johnson scores from the one, and Texas has just intercepted. Uh, Sam Bradford, the first dent by either quarterback. Both Bradford and McCoy are playing great in the first half. So it's 21-17 Oklahoma, Texas with the ball. What's fascinating about this game, row in the Big 12 South, huge game really for Texas. I mean, Texas has a gauntlet starting today that is, is as tough as four-week stretch as you're going to see in the game. Yeah, they have some tough games. And this one, we're seeing some things get exposed. One of the weaknesses of Texas is their secondary. There's a lot of young guys out there. You're seeing Bradford get the ball into all those pockets and holes. But the series continues. There's four games that are coming up. You see Missouri coming up, Oklahoma State. All these teams are similar to Oklahoma. And the fact they have big-time offenses, they can make plays. And with a secondary that has holes in it, that's going to be a problem for Texas. Meanwhile, on the other side, Oklahoma does not not play Missouri this year. Their road games coming up, Kansas State, Texas A&M, and Oklahoma State. So if OU wins this game, they'll be really be the front runners for the Big 12 South title. Coming back, we're going to check Rose headlines, some things to watch later today and tonight on another huge Saturday of college football. The Craftsman halftime. How about those hands by Ryan Broyles, huh? Harvard leading Cornell. More Craftsman halftime report next on Versus. The Craftsman Halftime Report on Versus is brought to you by Craftsman. There's a Craftsman in all of us. Make a dash to the big taste of Papa John's XL Explorer Pizza. An extra large with any three toppings, $13.99. Call or click PapaJohns.com. Plus, get a $3 coupon for Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull DVD. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing? Put the jug down. Put it down. This one's cheaper. Listen, your engine's the last place you want to skimp, right? I mean, you want to go with the leader. The one America's counted on for over 80 years. The kind you can put in any maker model. Get it? Got it. Good. Let's go, Sparky. Okay. When it comes to antifreeze, you're in a car guy knows. Only Presto is Presto. Nice. Look here. Nissan set out to create the perfect on-road vehicle and in the process, created a category. Introducing two crossover leaders from Nissan, the redesigned Murano, awarded as an IIHS top safety pick, and the versatile Rogue, named 2008's best new small crossover. Lease the 27 MPG Nissan Rogue, just $199 a month. Don't follow the leader, own one. At your Nissan dealer now. Has the world gone mad? Jeans that cost $100, $75, $50. Jeans should fit comfortably and look good. New Lee Relax Fit are the best fitting, most comfortable jeans, guaranteed. Relax price, relax fit. Lee, get what fits. Whoever complained about burning the midnight oil never held the title world's number one dad. And for a job well done, you need a tool well built. More torque greater comfort. The Craftsman Cross Force Ratchet Wrench. One more Craftsman tool guaranteed for life. For tools and advice, visit the Garage of Knowledge at Craftsman.com. There's a Craftsman in all of us. At TIAA Craft, we provide financial solutions for those who serve the greater good. We offer personalized objective advice, a commitment to consistent growth, low fees, and guaranteed income for life. Well, I see a light. Put our retirement expertise to work for you. Call today. TIAA Craft, financial services for the greater good. 
Brown, Columbia, Cornell, Dartmouth, Harvard, Penn, Princeton, and Yale. Synonymous with academic and athletic excellence, the Ivies have the broadest intercollegiate programs in the country. That means more teams, sports, and student athletes than any other intercollegiate athletic conference. These men and women combine national competitive success with the best academic records in the NCAA. Experience the Ivy League yourself at ivyleaguesports.com. The Craftsman Halftime Report. Kansas dug themselves a big hole last week, got out of it. Another slow start at home today, but they have taken a 9-7 lead in the second quarter. That's the final three minutes of the first half at home against Colorado. Okay, Roy, you've got some headlines for today. I want you to really work on explaining this first one to me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I got some headlines around college football. The first one is who's who in the zoo. You know, this week is going to start to expose a few teams to true strength of teams with animals as mascots. The top of the list, the Gators, ranked number 11, playing LSU, a big game. The Tigers, that's Mizzou and LSU, but Mizzou has to take on Oklahoma State. They're ranked number three all Offensively, this is a real test for Mizzou, who also is an offensive powerhouse but has holes in the secondary. And the Longhorns, last one, they got to make it happen. Next up, Vandy Northwestern, two schools known for academics that are both undefeated. Vandy, first time being 5-0 since World War II. And the last one, my upstate upset special, number six, Penn State versus Wisconsin. I believe this game is going to be an upset. Wisconsin had lost two games. They lost to Ohio State. They lost to Michigan. Both those games by a few plays. Penn State doesn't travel well. That's my upset special. Upset special. Watch Wisconsin. Another big game coming up later today. North Carolina's ranked at home to Notre Dame. Mm. If Notre Dame can win that yep. game, I think they win at least nine, which puts them in the BCS. And there's a lot of schools around the country that have got to be watching. To, they're not necessarily excited about Notre Dame being the BCS. I can't even believe they're not ranked already. I mean, they're 4-1. Mm -hmm. and one, They're playing good football. you got to give Notre Dame some love. Come on. Oh, I want to bottle that. See I heard that? That. See that. I like that, Ro. Just All right, we've got another big Ivy game coming up today with Yale in action at Dartmouth. We'll get you caught up on that game and an update on the Ivy League in the second week of league play when the Craftsman Halftime Report continues. At TIAA CREF, we provide financial solutions for those who serve the greater good. We offer personalized objective advice, a commitment to consistent growth, low fees, and guaranteed income for life. Well, I see a light. Put our retirement expertise to work for you. Call today. TIAA CREF, financial services for the greater good. found an institution. I would found an institution. An institution. Where any person. Any person. Any person. Any person. Any person. Can find instruction. Find instruction. Instruction. In any study. Any study. Any study. Any study. No matter how demanding my workout is, I'm not done until I finish it with EAS Myoplex. Taken within 30 minutes after my workout, the high quality protein in Myoplex helps me refuel and build lean muscle. That way, I don't waste my workout. Now I'm done. Grab your EAS Myoplex at a leading retailer near you, or for your free sample, go to EAS.com. Whoa, with stuffed crust pizza, you can't go straight for all that cheese in there. Start slow, and then BAM, you go for the big cheese. Right. Bam. Nobody stuffs the crust like Pizza Hut Stuffed Crust Pizza with loads of melty cheese stuffed inside that amazing crust. Specially priced at just $11.99. America's favorite pizza. Pizza Hut. Join Pizza Hut in supporting the World Food Program. It's like a totally different world. All the background noise starts to dissipate. I don't know how we traveled all that time without them. Experience the Bose QuietComfort Acoustic Noise Canceling Headphones. They deliver an unmatched combination of highly acclaimed noise reduction, audio performance, and comfortable fit. 
I do study with them on and use it to listen to music on my computer. Enjoy your music with the lifelike audio performance you'd expect from Bose, the most respected name in sound. I have a CD player actually on my desk or the MP3 player. These light and comfortable headphones electronically identify and reduce noise while faithfully preserving the music. They're so light, I don't even know that they're there. The first couple of times I would put them on and I flip the switch back and forth to hear the difference. It puts you in your own little space. It's really great. It's phenomenal sound. I mean, it's... It's hard to describe. Use our 30-day risk-free trial. Ask about making 12 easy payments with no interest charges from Bose. Order now and receive free shipping. Call today and leave the noise behind. Craftsman Halftime Report. Yale stunned in its first Ivy League game against Cornell. Today traveling up to Hanover, New Hampshire to meet the big green of Dartmouth. And Yale gets off the board quickly here with a pick. Larry Aberry with the interception in the end zone. And Yale has had two different quarterbacks throw touchdown passes. The lefty Brooke Hart here to John Sheffield. And then right-handed Ryan Fodor rolls out the other way and hits Reed Latham on this long score. Yeah, another tipped pass for a touchdown, bro. That's a big-time play. You know, the Bulldogs lead the Ivy League conference and scoring on offense and defense. These guys really want to get back to their preseason ranking of being number one. It's going to be an exciting game. They can go undefeated and go all the way to the end of the season with that big game versus Harvard. Right, which is November 22nd here on Versus, by the way. The game this yep. year right here on Versus. Yale has the best offensive player in the conference. A running back, Mike McLeod, 1,600-plus yards last year. This year only averaging 3.3 a game. They've got to get Mike McLeod back. Yeah, they got to get him going. And, and when we're watching this game, this Harvard game, this mm -hmm. game is, a, is, a, is saying an awful lot because Harvard has to continue to throw the football, be who they are, mm -hmm. get the ball. Pizzotti is playing awesomely yeah. well, the quarterback for Harvard. Um, if they do that, they're going to have a chance to repeat as conference champions, and it's nothing more impressive than seeing some smart guys play good football. Well, a terrific first half by Pizzotti and the Harvard offense. We'll send you back to Cambridge for the second half. Coming up next on Versus. This has been the Craftsman Halftime Report on Versus. Brought to you by Craftsman. There's a Craftsman in all of us. If you think all batteries are the same, consider this. It was a beautiful day in the park. Kevin, can you hand me That what? turned to panic in Kevin? an instant. And everything depended on a brick Kevin? house child locator. Kevin! Kevin! And packed inside every locator is the only battery brick house trusts. Duracell. So even if you hope you'll never have to use it, it still has to work. Duracell, trusted everywhere. For the perfect balance of fuel efficiency and performance, we take energy from exhaust and recycle it. For the perfect balance of fuel efficiency and performance, we take energy from exhaust and enjoy the efficient performance of the Saab Turbo. Now is a great time to own any 2008 Saab like this 93 Sport sedan. Find your Saab at SaabUSA.com. So here we are in the fourth quarter. No time left and the touchdown is under review. Hey guys, what do you think? We're not ready to go yet. Is there any way you can send this thing into overtime? Yeah. No problem. Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. This could finally end it. Oh, my. All my life, I wanted to play Harvard football. I'm studying to be a physician, but I was born to play basketball. First time I stepped on that ice, I got goosebumps. It was the first round of the championship. We were like this team out of nowhere. We came from behind and won. First win ever by a number 16 seed over a number one seed. And everyone was like, Harvard? You never know what's going to happen. Harvard versus Yale, the oldest rivalry in college football. And in the last 42 seconds, we scored 16 points to tie the game. He said it! And it ends 29, 29! What a finish! Man, I want to play in a game like that. I don't think I was really aware of the history until I got here and saw the fans. The year we won the NCAA title, that was big. Lane McDonald led the team to a 4-3 overtime victory over Minnesota. Fans were going wild. I want to make them go wild too. Harvard Sports. Come watch us play. Come watch us play. Come watch us play. The BYU 
TCU puts the nation's longest winning streak on the line against conference rival TCU. Versus college football, Thursday. I'm the center. I hike the ball. I take the ball. These pregame shows make me want to gouge my eyes out. Uh-huh. What are they doing? Hey, y'all say what y'all will. But come Sunday morning, 60 million pairs of eyeballs are going to be watching that football. I fear for the Republic. Sports Soup on Versus, the show that sports rights. Premieres Tuesday at 10. Welcome back, Rich Ackerman, along with former Dallas Cowboy Dale Hellestray. Second half set to begin with Harvard up big, 28-7 on Cornell. Uh, perhaps another miracle in the making for Cornell? Well, this is why you have 33 seniors. This is why you have that maturity level, because you are faced with adversity. The older you are, a lot of times the better you deal with it. Cornell, of course, coming off the miraculous 4th and 20 play last week when Jesse Baker caught a touchdown pass from Nathan Ford to help the Big Red improve to 3-0. Harvard coming into this one at 2-1, but dominating the first half. And we are underway in the second half as Walters takes it on his own goal line. It's across the 20, has a seam, but it's quickly closed up by the Harvard special teams and Anthony Spadafino on the hit. Let's take a look at the first half stats, Dale, and well, decidedly in the favor of Harvard. Yeah, and a lot of times stats can lie, but they obviously don't. Here you see the two turnovers. Obviously, you can't do that if you're going to win a football game. You see the penalties and then the total yards, 242 to 156. Cornell has to get this thing going. It has to get going right now after these halftime adjustments. And Adam Chris is 115 total yards in the first half after playing just three plays all season. On second, on first down to open the second half, Luke Sawula takes it out to the 40-yard line. Good for a first down, a gain of 11. Well, what's been interesting about Cornell is, is they've been spotty. You, you see a good play like that. Now, can they follow that up with another good play? Because the, their tendency has been one or two good plays and three bad plays, punt. Can they put a drive together? They put a drive together, they score a touchdown. If it's 28 to 14, you've got yourself a ball game here in the second half. The give is to Sewell again. He gets outside, shakes off the tackler, Doris, and finally driven out of bounds by Ryan Barnes at the 48-yard line in Harvard territory. Let's check in with Bob Harwood. Well, fellas, Jim Knowles on the Cornell sideline told me just a few moments ago that uh, obviously this is a very unusual position for them to be in. He said we didn't address and really bear down on how big this football game was. Too loose in execution in a number of areas. Obviously two or three bad choices in terms of the turnovers. But Dale, you talked about senior points in perspective he said with 33 guys who've been here this long it was a quiet halftime on my part as a head coach didn't have much to say just need to right the ship a little bit so will wrapped up at midfield if he's lucky he gets back to the line of scrimmage earlier in the week the Cornell coaching staff told us Dale the the biggest keys for them obviously coaches always like to say win the turnover battle so far two interceptions one of them was very very costly and protect the quarterback for the first time this year they've given up two sacks yes they have so the goals that they set they did not attain there obviously in the first half but you do play two halves just like in golf you play two nines you play two halves you win the second half you have a chance to win the football game they keep it on the ground one more time with Sarula who gets out to the 47 yard line on third down Another thing that Jim Knowles talked about this week was how much more calm and confident they were this year with 33 seniors, but that calm and confidence is really being put to the test today. Well, there's no doubt about that. They also preach, you know, one play won't make or break you, but three, four, five poor plays will definitely break you. Another third down situation, you're on your side of the 50, probably four down territory if you're Cornell. Four wide receivers. Ford slings one to the backup tight end, Alex Redenberg, and it's good for a first down. Good protection up front. Nate Ford looked like a little different quarterback. Going to see it from field level. Check down one, two. Nice job by Redenberg turning around right in the hole of that zone defense, picking up the first down, start to gain some confidence. I love to watch the first series for both teams coming out of halftime. Some coaches really take advantage of that and can make some changes. Some coaches don't. After 63 passing attempts last week, only seven in the first half for Nathan Ford, and Cornell continues to go with the ground game as Randy Barber gets a couple on that play. Gain of probably about two. 
set up a second and eight. Well, I think you're saying this is why the C is back on the helmet. Uh, I think they not only uh, mentally got beat in the first half, but physically got whipped. And that you go in to halftime, you challenge them a little bit, you say offensive line, we're going to come off the football, we're going to run the football. It's imperative that you get your blocks, stay on them, sustain them. We're putting it on you. You need to be physical. From the shotgun, three wide receivers for Cornell. Ford looks, fires, and completes it to Tommy Blameyer. Out of bounds, just short of a first down as we take another look. Well, nice job. We were talking about Cornell. Watch these guys over here. Watch the way the offensive line slides to the blitz right there. Nice job by the right side, giving them enough time to complete the pass, sit there in, in rhythm, complete the football third and short. Third and three for Cornell. Lyuza takes the direct snap, and he stops short of the first down by Matt Curtis. Well, I guess that 4-6 isn't a lie. I mean, it, Lyuza is very, very quick, and Matt Curtis caught it. At this point, Dale, you're down 21 points well, there's no doubt. Cornell, and it looks like they're going to go for it right here on fourth and two. They have to get to the 28-yard line. Six for six on fourth down. Lyuza takes the snap, takes off, and he's got the first down and more. Brought down at the 18-yard line by Matthew Henson. Six for six, so now they're seven for seven. Maybe they should just tell their offense that, you know what, every down's fourth down. Nice job by the left side of the offensive line, and Lyuza just picking his hole. You see big number uh, 53, Andrew Bowl, and, and uh, Babak getting up there, doing a nice job opening a hole, and then Lyuza doing the rest. So now with the first down, Nathan Ford back in at, four, at quarterback. The three wide receivers. Ford looks to the outside and completes it to Blameyer. Second reception on this series for Blameyer, who had only three receivers, three receptions rather, coming into today. Another one of those passes you're going to see. A nice job. Barry almost gets over there for Harvard, able to break that up. But Blameyer doing a nice job coming down with the football. Again, keeping those chains moving. Now it's second and six. You're staying ahead of the chains. You look so much better as an offense when you're doing that. And under center, Nathan Ford, deep drop this time. Looks and he's got a man, and it's Brian Walters. He's brought down at the eight-yard line by the safety, Colin Zitch. Is this the same Cornell offense we saw in the first half? I mean, I mean, Nathan Ford doing such a nice job taking advantage of that protection up front. He looks like a completely different quarterback. Cornell looks like a completely different yes, team do. on this opening drive of the first half. Now can they pay half. it off with a touchdown? They need, a, they need to come away with seven points, first down on the seven-yard line. Three wide receivers all stacked on the far side. Ford gives it to Bar uh, Sarula, rather. He's trying to avoid the tackles, but a sea of crimson smothers him at about the 11-yard line. Well, when you're the offensive team and you're in white jerseys, and there's more dark jerseys on your side of the ball as the running backs approach it. That usually doesn't bode well. And a uh, little hesitation there because there wasn't anywhere to go with the football. You lose two. Now all of a sudden, does doubt creep in your mind or can you move forward? Forward progress stopped at the nine yard line. So that's where they spot the ball. Second down. Five first downs on this drive for the Big Red. Their game winning drive last week consisted of 17 plays. So. Certainly methodical is something they're used to. Here's Ford again. Pumps, doesn't have a receiver, and just throws it away smartly. So Ford didn't have somebody late in the first half and wound up being intercepted for the second time today. That time, he smartly throws it where nobody could get it. Well, I was going to tell you why he double pumped that. Brian Walters, number 18, is going to be coming in motion, coming across the field. Right there, he slips. That's where he wanted to go with the football. Hangs on to it a little bit longer. Great coverage elsewhere downfield. Does a smart thing, throws the ball away. Don't throw an interception down here. The incompletion brings up third and nine. And Cornell needs something desperately on this drive, down 28 to seven. Sewula is the lone back with three wide receivers. 
Harvard bringing the rush. They fake the handoff. Four takes off, and he slips and is hit by Colin Zitch. So at this point, Dale, do you just go for the easy points, or do you well, try I think, to get into the end zone? I think at, at seven yards, you're probably going to kick the field goal. That's a little bit too far, but you're one Zitch missed tackle away from getting in the end zone. Nice job by Nathan Ford faking the handoff, drawing all that defense because they were blitzing. Harvard was coming after him. Almost got in the end zone. I'm not so sure that you would be really, really aware if you're Harvard here that they might not try, try a fake. This will be from 25 yards out. Brad Greenway has missed one from 21 this year. And this one is good. So Cornell puts some points on the board on its first drive of the second half, but still trails Harvard by 18. Thanks to the industry's first electric power steering system, the Grizzly 700 stands alone as the world's number one big bore ATV. A hard act to follow. Until now, the brand new Grizzly 550 with power steering. So you can pound it all day without feeling it the next day. The new Grizzly 550 with electric power steering from Yamaha. Now get a $400 warm winch for just $69.95 plus special low financing. Now you can get extra cash. Recycle your old gold that's gathering dust. Call the number on your screen for quick cash. The gold kit is absolutely free. Send broken and outdated items like old rings, charms, chains, and more. I got $1,000 for my old gold jewelry. It's safe, it's fast, it's easy, and the gold kit is free. We'll mail you a free personalized gold kit for safe shipping in our new virtually indestructible TrueTech mailer for maximum protection. Your check will follow promptly. I called and got my free gold kit. I sent in my jewelry and they sent me my check. The gold kit and postage are free. Your satisfaction guaranteed. Here's how it works. Call for your free gold kit, then gather your old gold jewelry, send it in the free postage paid TrueTech mailer and get your cash fast. I'm going on vacation with the money I got for my old gold jewelry. Don't wait. Take your old gold jewelry and turn it into cash now. Call the number on your screen now or visit goldkit.com. Welcome back to Harvard Stadium. Rich Ackerman, Dale Hellestray. A time-consuming drive for the Big Red on their first possession of the second half. They go 71 yards on 15 plays. It took 7 minutes and 17 seconds and they chip into the Harvard lead, which they desperately needed to do, Dale. It would have been a perfect drive if they had punched it in for seven. Now again, what adjustments did the defense make against that Harvard offense? Because they desperately need a three and out. So Harvard on top, 28 to 10. As the number one ranked offense in the Ivy League will get the ball for the first time in the second half. Poe takes it at the eight bobbles it and picks it up gets across the 20 and gets out to the 22 yard line. So Chris Pizzotti and the Harvard offense get their first chance in the second half up 28 to 10. No matter how demanding my workout is, I'm not done until I finish it with EAS Myoplex. Taken within 30 minutes after my workout, the high quality protein in Myoplex helps me refuel and build lean muscle. That way, I don't waste my workout. Now I'm done. Grab your EAS Myoplex at a leading retailer near you, or for your free sample, go to EAS.com. God forbid an anthrax outbreak. I understand why you bring this up at lunch. You may find yourself in a beautiful What is our exit strategy on rat? There is no exit. Based on the unbelievable true story of George W. Bush. Yo, I can see all these latte stiff and lefties going nuts again. Fiasco. And the trillion dollar mistake. Like we owe them an explanation. Josh Brolin is W in the PG-13 in theaters Friday. If you looked at my Subaru Outback, you might think I didn't love it. But the truth is, I consider the dirt and trail dust and mud that gets splattered on it kind of a badge of honor. Who am I to wash all that away? I just let the universe take care of it. Live big, love an outback. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. 
At TIAA CREF, we provide financial solutions for those who serve the greater good. We offer personalized objective advice, a commitment to consistent growth, low fees, and guaranteed income for life. Well, I see a light. Put our retirement expertise to work for you. Call today. TIAA CREF, financial services for the greater good. Welcome back to historic Harvard Stadium. Rich Ackerman along with Dale Hellestray. The Crimson lead it by a score of 28 to 10, Dale, as the Ivy League's number one offense steps onto the field for the first time in the second half and a big stand right here for the Cornell defense. The first play is a handoff to Ho. Gets a good block, and he gets up to the 28-yard line, a gain of five. Well, they run this 3-3-5 defense because they want to blitz. They want to be aggressive. They want to come from different angles. I don't think they did that as much as they'd like to in the first half. Let's see the adjustments they make here in the second half. They've got to somehow, some way, get this Harvard offense out of rhythm, out of sync, get the football back to the Cornell offense. On second and five, Pizzotti dumps it over the middle. And it's complete to the tight end, Schwarzkopf, out to the 35-yard line. It's good for a first down. Well, and you see the calm and the cool of the quarterback, Chris Bazzotti. First two options were not open. Comes to his third, dumps it in there, picks up the first down. Makes it look fairly simple. Again, I want to want, I want to see this Cornell defense keep coming, keep blitzing. You are going to put some pressure on him, try and force him into a mistake. Luft is the man in motion. The pitch to Ho. Across the 35. And unable to shed the tackler, he's brought down at the 36-yard line. A gain of one on the play. Nice job. I, I, I love both defensive secondaries. Both very physical. Not afraid to come up and hit you, get you down on the ground. We've seen the hits that Harvard has done. Cornell's defensive backs, every one of them, come up there, put their hat on the ball, get you on the ground. Cornell has been very stingy this year against the run, averaging 37 yards a game, allowing the opposing running backs. Pizzani gives it to Gino Gordon, able to shed a tackler, and comes out close to midfield, brought down at the 46 by Ben Heller, the backup safety. Nice job breaking a couple tackles by Gino Gordon. Cornell did come with the blitz on the outside. Tim Bax, you see uh, him coming. You see um, number 96 coming right up the middle. Your number 96 is uh, Graham Ryan, able to elude those two tacklers and pick up the first down. And flags flying, fingers pointing about who may have moved early. Snap, ball start. Number 60, offense, five That's yards. Alex Spizak gets down. call for the false start. Dale, in the first half, it was a two-to-one margin, pass, passing yards to rushing yards for Harvard. Uh, they were looking perhaps for more balance, but your thoughts on, on how they've mixed things up today? I think they've done a great job mixing it up, and obviously those passing yards, 67 of them came on the first pass play. So uh, that's going to skew any type of stats. I thought that they kept Cornell completely off balance there in the first half. 33 yards rushing for Gino Gordon thus far. The lone man in the backfield. Rosati fakes, now slings it out to Gordon. He takes it, and he takes it up to the 44-yard line. Nice job running the football. The Cornell defense, see a bunch of white shirts around the football. And we talked about, we talked to the coaching staff about this offense, and they don't huddle up. They run the no huddle. Sometimes they'll get up and snap it. Sometimes they take their time trying to get the defense to make sure that they can't get any substitutions in there. Second and 12 from the 44. Pizzotti directing the one back, Gordon. And he gives it to him. Gordon looking for the hole. Not much there. A bunch of white jerseys bring him down. One of them was Chris Costello, the middle linebacker, number 55. It's interesting to see the cat and mouse game. Talked about it early, but Pizzotti is looking at Tim Bax, number seven. Number seven, the, the strong safety for Cornell, is looking at Pizzotti. They're playing a game of cat and mouse. Bax acts like he's going to blitz. Sometimes he backs out, sometimes he comes, forcing Harvard to make an audible call every once in a while. 
Jason Miller, the blocking back. Pizzotti, though, goes to the air. He's got a man down the sideline, complete to left. And he's knocked out of bounds at the 12 by Bax. Beautifully done by Chris Pizzotti, laying it right in there. Hit him in stride. Look, Love just taking off on a street route, a nine route, whatever you want to call it, running down the sidelines. Good protection up front. And this is the accuracy of Pizzotti putting the ball right where it needs to be as Love runs right by Frank Morand. Big gainer gives Harvard that field position that they so desperately wanted starting this third quarter. So Pizzotti once again working from the shotgun. Luff three receptions, 77 yards as Gordon gets the call on first down and gets a couple. Well, their offense for Cornell and the defense, I see so many similarities between them where they'll play good for one or two downs, then you give up a, a big play defensively. You look good for a couple plays offensively, then you don't look so good. The consistency on that football team has not been there today. Coming up on three minutes left in this first, qu a third quarter rather. Cornell scoring on its first drive of the quarter. And now Harvard looking to answer up by 18. Gordon behind Pizzotti. Who evades the rush, gets it off, but short hops it for Levi Richards. Good pressure by the big red, Pizzotti. 13 of 19 now over 200 yards passing. Well, Chris Costello almost getting through there for the sack, but flag on the far side. Looks like illegal procedure on Harvard. Brings up third down. Nice call, partner. I think you could wear the stripes. What well, do you think? And since, well, I don't know about that. There's not many referees I liked when I was playing, but they're doing a nice job today. Interesting because you could take the penalty and it had been second down and about 12, or since it was an incomplete pass, you decline it, make it third down and long for this Harvard offense. It'll be a third and seven for the Crimson, and they will use three wide receivers. The freshman Chris is already with two touchdowns today. Lined up on the near side at the bottom of your screen. Pizzotti looks in his direction. Now just looking for an outlet. Tries to get rid of it. And can't. He's wrapped up. Two Cornell defenders there on the play. Kunis gets the sack. And nice Ricky Ballou also right there. Nice job with the three-man rush, but give credit to the secondary. We've talked about them a little bit. Giving those three defensive linemen a chance to break through. Nowhere to go with the ball for Pizzotti. Does a smart thing. Tucks it. Doesn't throw an interception. Gives you a chance to kick a field goal. So long. From 35 yards out. High snap, but it gets down well. And he puts it through the <laughs> off the upright. And it goes through. And it's now 31-10 Harvard. So the two teams have traded field goals in this third quarter. And Harvard is up by 21 once again. That's why they put those uprights there, so you can use them to bounce through. Just like he planned it. <laughs> Harvard up 31-10. At TIAA CREF, we provide financial solutions for those who serve the greater good. We offer personalized objective advice, a commitment to consistent growth, low fees, and guaranteed income for life. Put our retirement expertise to work for you. Call today. TIAA CREF, financial services for the greater good. All right, guys, clip of the week, headliner. What do you got? I've got a killer clip of Beckham getting stuffed on a PK. Penalty kick. Most popular game on the planet. Uh, not sure, soccer, but I think we can beat that. Oh, God! Oh, oh, soccer. Man, get up! Sports Soup on Versus, the show that sports rights. Hosted by Matt Eisman. Premieres Tuesday at 10. Oh! On Versus, tonight and tomorrow at 8. The BYU 
puts the nation's longest winning streak on the line against conference rival TCU. Versus college football, Thursday. Rich Ackerman along with former Dallas Cowboy Dale Hellestray. Less than two minutes left in this third quarter in which both the Crimson and the Big Red have traded field goals and Harvard out in front by a score of 31 to 10. And once again Cornell lining up with three return men. Patrick Long the approach. And the kick is taken by Walters at the two. Up to the 25 and brought down there by Colin Zitch. Final 151 of the third quarter when we come back. Harvard up 31-10. Make a dash to the big taste of Papa John's XL Explorer Pizza. An extra large with any three toppings, $13.99. Call or click PapaJohns.com. Plus, get a $3 coupon for Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull DVD. No work, no worries. Finally here. Yep. Wouldn't miss this for the world. It's what you've been waiting for. Quad Fair is here. Your chance to score the lowest financing and best deals of the year on Suzuki's full line of King Quad and Sport ATVs. Plus, enter the Quad Fair sweepstakes to win big. Make tracks to your Suzuki dealer today. Sure is pretty out here. Hey, Tim, show Joel how everything you touch turns into Skittles. That's awesome. Here's me. Touch the rainbow. Taste the rainbow. When I took a slap shot to the face last year, I wasn't thinking about losing an eye. All I was thinking about was not losing. BYU has the nation's longest winning streak, a Heisman Trophy candidate, and national title aspirations. But the only guarantee is that there are no guarantees. BYU, TCU versus college football Thursday. Welcome back, Rich Ackerman, Dale Hellestray, Cornell set to take over. First and 10 from their own 28. You see the stat right there. We'll see if the Harvard defense can hold, but Dale for the second straight week, Cornell is gonna have to play catch up here. And last week, 63 pass attempts. Today, they're 17 of 25. Do you expect to see a little bit of a, a two minute offense right here? With, uh, with them down 21 with just 151 left in the third quarter. Well, I think you will see them pick up the pace, and, and because of the way they run their offense, it's not totally out of their comfort zone. Four wide receivers. Ford has a man. It's Baker at midfield, and he's hit by Henson. Uh, flag after the play. But a nice catch by Jesse Baker. Very nice route. Good throw. Good catch. Looks like they're probably going to get a little... Unsportsmanlike conduct. Did he hit on the his play. head. All of the play is a first down. After the ball was dead, we have a personal foul. 81 white. On force 15 yards, it will be first down. Horatio Blackman called, and that's a crushing blow after they had just passed midfield. Part of that big gain is going to come back 22 yard completion and 15 so it's a net gain of seven but obviously back in Cornell territory and there it was you see number 81 Horatio Blackman taking a little shot after the play was dead those are the kind of things that will absolutely crush your offense you've got some momentum big play all of a sudden you get marched back because of an after the whistle penalty. And that reception, Jesse Baker now over a thousand yards for his career and receiving yards for the big red. This time Blackman goes up and gets it and a big tackle by Derek Parker, but a nice job by Blackman to hold on. Well, that, that's one of those catches that you say, I better catch this one. I just cost my team 15 yards. You're gonna see this pass coming right into your living room. Blackman goes up, catches with his hands, which you love, hangs on even though he knows that ground's going to smart a little bit, picks up another first down. The field turfer pushing the blow a little better. <laughs> Ford throws once again, has a man, it's Canty, and he's brought down 
wrapped up by Glenn Doris, who was quick to the ball. Well, and what's interesting now, and every defensive coordinator goes through this, but how soft do you play if you're Harvard? You go into that prevent type defense, go against what you've been doing all game long, and you see this Cornell offense starting to complete passes that they weren't able to do earlier. Always a fine balancing act as it looks like Harvard's going to try and bring some pressure this time. Just short of a first down, second and two, but Luke Sewula will not be able to get it. He was met by a couple of Crimson defenders on that play. Connor Murphy leading the charge, number 29, coming up from his rover position and making the tackle for a slight loss, bringing up third down as this third quarter winds down. The 12th time that Big Red have faced a third and sixth situation, and they'll take it over in the fourth quarter when we come back right here on Versus. perfect balance of fuel efficiency and performance, we take energy from exhaust and recycle it. For the perfect balance of fuel efficiency and performance, we take energy from exhaust and recycle it. Turning repetition into joy. The efficient performance of the Saab Turbo. Now is a great time to own any 2008 Saab like this 9.3 Sport sedan. Find your Saab at SaabUSA.com. Yeah. We've got what you need. We're here because we've been there with the tools, products, and advice to get it done right. True Value. Start right. Start here. Visit TrueValue.com slash TV for a free $5 coupon. Print your $5 coupon at TrueValue.com slash TV. This political season, both parties are offering change. But with Lumber Liquidator's economic stimulus package, you get dollars. Our plan is to save you money with low prices on major brands of hardwood flooring. First quality Bella Wood, pre-quartered by two and a quarter inch natural ash pre-finished flooring with a 50 year warranty, only $2.99 a square foot. R.L. Colston, pre-quartered by two and a quarter inch red oak flooring, only $1.99 a square foot. Virginia Millworks, pre-quartered by four and three quarter inch Matterhorn Birch pre-finished flooring, only $3.49 a square foot and Dream Home laminate floors from 69 cents a square foot. And it's all available with no down payment, no payments, and no interest until April 2009. These great deals are on first quality flooring and have a full warranty. Plus, you save 20% on matching trim and moldings and 10% on installation. Visit any store, lumberliquidators.com, or call 1-800-FLOORING for the best deals on hardwood floors. This is Tom Sullivan. I approve these deals. 15 minutes to go at Harvard Stadium, 31-10 for the home team, and that's the good news from the Crimson perspective. The not-so-great news is the loss of running back Cheng Ho for the balance of the afternoon. Mid-third quarter, he had a very tough collision near the line of scrimmage, went into the dressing room with the coaching staff and the training staff, was evaluated by the doctors, and the word is a pretty tough chest contusion, so uh, no chances here with their valuable running back as they try to milk down the clock with 15 to go, guys. Right now, Cornell with it, third and three. Ford fires, and this time Blackman can't hold on. So that'll bring a fourth down, and down 31 to 10. Cornell's gonna take a shot here, fourth and three. Nice coverage there by Matt Hansen. Number three for Harvard, able to grab Blackman's arm and kind of rip that ball loose. Otherwise, that'd have been a completion for a first down. Nice technique from a young cornerback. Four wide receivers here on fourth down. They have had success seven for seven this season. They need to make it eight for eight. They hope to stay alive in this one down by 21 in the opening seconds of the fourth. Ford has time and it's deflected away by Ryan Barnes. So Harvard will take over depending on what the flag is on the field thrown at the 38. 
I think the ball was tipped in the air, which will probably nullify. Unless it's going to be holding. Holding. Defense. Number four on a pass that crossed the line of scrimmage. Ten yards. Automatic first down. So what he's saying is if the ball's tipped behind the line, line of scrimmage, all bets are off. No pass interference. No, no holding. Anything like that. But if it's past the line of scrimmage, then the tip ball doesn't matter. Looks like a little in incidental contact, but keeps this drive alive for Cornell. The big red with some life, and they return with four wide receivers. Ford has to throw and completes it to Baker, but a great play by Barry this time to wrap him up. Another flag on the field, though. Well, I tell you what, Glenn Doris, number 54, threw his arms out, and I've always thought this that if I'm a referee and I see a player put my arms up in the air I'm calling a penalty base mask number 54 the defense that's a 15 yard foul from the previous spot automatic first down but because what you do when you're a player hey, you draw attention to yourself you throw your hands up in there like look at me no I didn't mean to do that you're doing something because it's an unnatural move 54 comes in and it's an inadvertent face mask he tries to get his hand off right there and remember 15 yard face mask and he puts his hands up and go oh, I, I didn't mean to do that draws attention to and you 15 yards regardless of what happens when you saw the head move right there so first down for Cornell four throws the end zone Baker and Henson battling for it and Baker of course was looking for a flag but a good play by Henson to knock it away they were both going for the ball so Henson was within his right. A lot of physical play down there. You're going to see both receiver and defensive back like in contact down the field. Ball kind of thrown up for grabs and referees are going to let you play. Well, he's looking down back there. at the quarterback. So he is obviously making a play for the ball. So you could certainly make a case that that was a legitimate play by Matthew. I think Hanson. it depends on which sideline you're standing on, <laughs> to be quite frank with you. Jim Knowles was looking for something different there. Second and 10 from the 23. Four wide receivers once again. Luke Sewula, the lone back. Ford out of the shotgun. Quick pass, and it goes off the hands of Liuzzo. Let's go back to Ted Robinson in the studios for a game break. Well, Rich, Oklahoma's Sam Bradford has thrown four touchdowns, but Colt McCoy says, don't forget about me. That to Jordan Shipley. McCoy is 22 of 27. Texas within one. Rich? Thank you very much, Ted. We talked about the battle for the Heisman Trophy. It's a pretty good battle between the two quarterbacks in the Cotton Bowl today. Nathan Ford trying to make it a battle between quarterbacks here as he tries to lead Cornell back. The pressure comes. He's able to avoid it for a little while. Now just throws it away. Well, that's one of those decisions that the coaching staff would like to see him make earlier. Nobody open. Had good protection, went to about his fourth read, still nobody open, throw the ball out of bounds. That's a recipe for disaster, running to your left as a right-handed quarterback and trying to throw across your body and complete a pass. Throws it out of bounds, brings up another fourth down situation. And they have no choice but to go for it right here. Fourth and 10 from the 23, they have to get to the 13-yard line. Four wides once again. Ford. Flushed out of the pocket by Doris, now throws to the end zone, and he overthrows Walters. So Harvard will take over. He had the man, but just couldn't get it there, overthrowing Brian Walters. And Harvard will take over. 14 minutes left, comfortably in front, 31 to 10. You style chest hair here? No. Too bad. Ow! I'm three. Excuse me, I need to go, sir. Did you just come out here? Excuse me. I'm here for the stylist position. Crazy times call for crazy fun. Plan your escape at visitlasvegas.com. 
Brown, Columbia, Cornell, Dartmouth, Harvard, Penn, Princeton, and Yale, synonymous with academic and athletic excellence, the Ivies have the broadest intercollegiate programs in the country. That means more teams, sports, and student-athletes than any other intercollegiate athletic conference. These men and women combine national competitive success with the best academic records in the NCAA. Experience the Ivy League yourself at ivyleaguesports.com. found an institution. I would found an institution. An institution. Where any person. Any person. Any person. Any person. Any person. Can find instruction. Find instruction. Instruction. In any study. Any study. Any study. Any study. Game of the Week, presented by TIAA CREF on Versus, is brought to you by TIAA CREF, financial services for the greater good. Just a long snap away from the Charles River. Dale, you think you could hit it from here? Well, I'm wondering if they make one big enough to hold me above water. <laughs> Harvard leading by a score of 31 to 10, 14 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Andrew Berry who's had a fine day and tutoring perhaps his successor Matthew Henson the Ivy League Rookie of the Week with a big day thus far three passes broken up one interception four tackles what a bright future to a terrific program here under Tim Murphy Pizzotti from the shotgun fakes the handoff now running and he hits Nikolai Schwarzkopf who can't hold on but you know we talked about Guys emerging. Henson has come on over the last two weeks. Adam Chrysis getting his first big exposure to big time college football today with, a, with an impressive day with two touchdowns. And it just goes to show you what Tim Murphy and his staff have done here at Harvard Dale as far as their recruiting and how they recruit players. Uh, it's, it was so eye opening and educational for me to sit down with coach yesterday and learn how they do it. I mean, that they, they recruit the same guys that a Stanford or a Vanderbilt or Northwestern is going to going to recruit to try and come here and play football and, and they're out there seven days a week trying to scour the bushes for guys who can who are smart enough to go to Harvard and uh, can also play some football on second down Gino Gordon takes it ahead for a couple of my question is how do you turn down Harvard if they call well the, you know, <laughs> the only way you turn down Harvard because they had that tiered system where you might have to pay a little bit but they do have slots open to, to help kids um, financially and, uh, and and so if you're in a certain financial class, you come here basically a full scholarship. And I was not aware of that. So they can go out to different parts of the country. You look at their roster, they're re well represented all around the country. Third and six for the Crimson from their 28. They must get to the 34. Gino Gordon is the lone back. Pizzotti to throw, lots one up for left. And he's got some room at the 45 gets past the defender and he takes it all the way down to the six. A terrific play hits him in stride and another big strike from Pizzotti to left. Loved one on one you blitz that's what they did he's going against Fenton makes a fantastic move right here to buy a little extra time and turns on the Jets almost gets in the end zone Six. what a play on third down 66 yards second time today they've had a pass play go for over 60 the first was the 67 yard touchdown reception to Chris on the third play of the game Pizzotti to the air again this time the safety valve to Gordon who's brought down by Fenton and Costello at the nine yard line but, you know, we talked about Pizzotti's accuracy. You played with a quarterback who was one of the most accurate passers of his time in Troy Aikman. And not to compare Pizzotti to Aikman, but as he tries to improve his game to take it to the next level, to the NFL, how important on the scale is accuracy? Well, you talked to the Coach Murphy, and he said he feels it's number one. He kind of he compared him favorably to Matt Ryan, the number one pick of the Atlanta Falcons, who's had some success in the National Football League. Obviously, you have to have the arm strength to throw that deep out, but accuracy is a close second. Gordon takes it again from 
Pizzotti, and he's brought down at the eight-yard line. You know, you, can, you ask, it, can he make all the throws? And the coach and staff believes in him. He can, he can make that deep out throw across the field. He's, he's got touch for short passes, leadership skills. He's got the entire bag. And what's amazing to me is you look at him, he's listed at 6'5", and I believe about 215 in the program. And that's what they said. He, he looks like he could put on another 15 pounds of muscle and be kind of develop and get a little bit stronger. And I, I think the future is very, very bright for Chris Pizzotti. Third and goal from the seven. Derner, the fullback in motion. And the pass goes for Miller, the tight end. And another Pizzotti touchdown pass today. And it's 37 to 10 Harvard. As Pizzotti continues to pile up the passing yards. As he tries to make a case for an NFL career. One former Harvard quarterback, Ryan Fitzpatrick, will be starting for the Bengals tomorrow. Pizzotti hoping to start on Sundays next year. Pizzotti's third touchdown pass of the day. And the point after is good. Third down, third down. Got to complete a pass, what do you do? You find Mr. Luff, number 82, nice move, and then watch the move here. He gets Fenton faked out and gets down inside the 10-yard line, and then the fake option to the right. Pizzotti finds his tight end. Jason Miller for the touchdown. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing? Put the jug down. Put it down. This one's cheaper. Listen, your engine's the last place you want to skimp, right? I mean, you want to go with the leader, the one America's counted on for over 80 years. The kind you can put in any maker model. Get it? Got it. Good. Let's go, Sparky. Okay. When it comes to antifreeze, your inner car guy knows. Only Presto is Presto. Nice. Look here. The Suzuki SX4 Sport has a unique pop-up Navi system, a roomy cabin, 30 miles per gallon highway, and more horsepower than the Honda Civic LX, all for under 16,000. So we can pretty much assure you'll have a great time in it. But once you're out of it, you're on your own. The Suzuki SX4. Live large, drive small. Suzuki. Want to get strong? Want to get lean? Want to get ripped? Well, now you can with Iron Gym. Iron Gym turns any door into your own personal gym in just seconds. Its unique design wraps around your door frame and uses leverage, so there's no screws and no damage to your door. Start off with chin-ups and pull-ups to develop and strengthen your shoulders, arms, back, and lats. And with three different grip positions, narrow grip, wide grip, and neutral, you can switch up your routine and keep challenging your muscles. But we're not finished there. Take it to the floor for deep push-ups and it's a sturdy base for tricep dips. Then finish off with gut-busting crunches. In just minutes a day, you'll build lean muscle and get ripped. Order Iron Gym today for just two payments of $29.99. You'll also get these hanging ab straps for an explosive abdominal workout. But call right now and we'll cut the price in half. That's Iron Gym with hanging ab straps for just one payment of $29.99. But you've got to call now. Welcome back, Rich Ackerman along with former Dallas Cowboy Dale Hellestray and Bob Harwood on the sidelines. A little more than 11 minutes left in the fourth quarter. And Harvard in a blowout right now. 38 to 10, Chris Pizzotti with his third touchdown pass today. He's 16 of 23 for 281 yards. And Matt Luft, the key play in that drive, a 60 yard reception. Fourth straight week, a Harvard wide receiver has topped 100 yards receiving. Luft doing it for the second time this year. Walters takes the kickoff. And he gets out to the 28-yard line. Andrew Berry of Harvard, who's had a terrific game thus far, is our TIAA Cref student athlete of the game. And a double major and will graduate in June with not one, but two degrees. A bachelor's and a master's. I was lucky to just get one. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and Coach says he feels like he's the best player on their football team on top of that. He's a number one community service guy. Hey, does the guy ever sleep? I mean, I was tired yesterday just listening to him talk about the guy, much less out there doing it. What an incredible, incredible student athlete Andrew Berry. Makes him 
I respect him that much more. A terrific player both on and off the field for the Crimson. Ford out of the shotgun keeps it himself and takes it out to the 34 yard line a game of five. And with more on Andrew Berry, the standout for the Harvard defense, here's Bob Harwood. Well, Rich, you were prophetic when you said Tudor just a few minutes ago, talking about him and his understudy at the position, because obviously in the community, both in his home state of Maryland and uh, here with the Cambridge Youth Enrichment Program, he does spend a lot of time with kids who uh, are meeting some struggles, either uh, from the family situation or, or community issues at large, and he teaches Bible study as well as uh, math and sciences in both areas here. So spreading himself around and the values of being uh, diverse and I guess uh, dynamic as student athletes are supposed to be in the Ivy League. Ford keeps it himself again and he's brought down at the 36 by Sean Hayes, the backup linebacker. We talked about what it takes to be an Ivy League student athlete. <laughs> wow. Andrew Berry leads the list as far as high school valedictorians. There are five of them on this Harvard squad. And you said you just missed being valedictorian by what, 92 spots? 92. How many were in your class? Uh, 598. Okay, so you so counted it I out. I did okay. I was able to put a couple of numbers <laughs> together. Of course, I bribed a few people in, in the school offices to Five. boost me up to 93. Five valedictorians. What a I still couldn't get into an school. Ivy League school, though. <laughs> Third and one converts to Zach Canny for the first down close to midfield. Well, as you see this Cornell offense go, and obviously Harvard's playing a little bit softer, but you see the potential of this offense, and you pick up some of those third downs early in this football game, and, and you pay them off with touchdowns, you're looking at a completely different football game. They got to develop that consistency, especially early in football games. And today the turnovers really hit them hard, especially that, that interception right before the end of the half, with which Harvard was able to capitalize on and turn it into points. The direct snap to Ford once again. This time he's brought down by Ben Grafe, the backup defensive end. But both of these schools produce so many, so many prominent, not only athletes, but presidents as we saw earlier. People have contributed in all walks of society. It really is, it really is amazing when you, when you get to these campuses and you just feel the tradition. Well, you just walk around Harvard and you almost feel a little smarter. <laughs> I mean, at least I do. I mean, I, I, I felt a little smarter this weekend, and hopefully that'll rub off. And just an absolute wonderful campus setting, great place to play football. Just, just a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Shane Kilcoyne was the intended receiver, second generation Cornellian. His father was a former All Ivy offensive lineman, graduated in '81. Did you say Cornelian? Cornelian. Is that a word? Yes, it is. Okay. Just say hey, I'm going with you on it. Can we go with Harvidian? Does that <laughs> I work? Don't know. Cornelian. <laughs> I like that. I'm, I think it's I think it's listed in Webster's. I'm going to use that. Brings up a third and ten and an empty backfield for Cornell. 38 to 10. Harvard in front. They've had tremendous success in recent years in this series, winning six of the last seven and comfortably in front here. And that pass is incomplete. Flags fly, though, to coin the intended receiver. Well, I'm going to tell you why those flags are there. It's because number 25, Ryan Barnes, made, made no play on the football. He went over to, to take a shot, basically a defenseless receiver. And, and I don't think there's any doubt. When you see three flags around you. Personal foul. Personal foul. Defense. Defense. Targeting a player above the head with his head. 15-yard foul. Automatic first down. Versus college football, more of it this Thursday night. Eighth ranked BYU puts the nation's longest winning streak on the line in a special primetime Mountain West Conference clash with TCU. Then on Saturday, it's Big 12 and Pac-10 action back to back. First, Nebraska takes on Iowa State, and then Oregon State meets Washington versus college football. It's wild out there. 822 left here. Empty backfield once again, and that time overthrown for Steven Liuza. So Nathan Ford off the mark again. Well, in that previous play, that penalty, as they said, uh, targeting uh, a receiver above the shoulders, it, what Ryan Barnes did there was he made no play on the ball. And, and all you need to do is you make a play on the ball there, everything's fine, it's an it's, uh, incomplete pass, give the ball back to your offense. He'll learn from that. Second and 10 for Cornell, which is really an uncharted territory in this regard this year, trailing by 28 points in the fourth quarter. 
Ford gets it to Walters, the wide receiver, and he's brought down by Barry. But it's been a nice ascension, if you will, for the Big Red under Jim Knowles. He took over now in his fifth year, and his first year went four and six, six and four, and then a couple of 500 seasons. But as we have already seen the 33 seniors determined to make this year a little different, and despite today's outcome, off to a pretty good start. But Knowles talked about upgrading the talent at the skill position, especially and as you see five wide receivers on the field. Ford throws it out for Canty, the senior, and he's brought down by Doris at the 19-yard line. But it's been a nice, nice changeover for Jim Knowles, who was convinced to go into coaching by his former coach, Maxie Bond, who recruited him to Cornell. His recruiting pitch really wasn't anything out of the ordinary. He said, you'll get $3,000, you'll live in a basement, and you'll get free meals. And, and wasn't he making pretty good money while uh, while this offer was being proposed to him? He was working in the financial <laughs> world as Canty's able to come up with that one. He's brought down by Barnes, and he was working in the financial world in a much different time back then. Although back in 87, right after Jim Knowles graduated, there was the stock market crash of 87, but it didn't take much. And he said, $3,000, live in a basement and free meals, I'm in. And here he is all these years later, coaching his alma mater and doing a very nice job. We talked about the Red River rivalry today being played in the Cotton Bowl. Jim Knowles was part of the coaching staff when Mississippi played in the Cotton Bowl. Ford throws to the end zone and a touchdown. Zach Canty, the receiver. And that makes it 38 to 16. What a throw by Nate Ford. Connor Murphy trailing Canty all the way down in perfect position for coverage. Just trailing him right there. And then Nate Ford goes it. Wow. <laughs> Connor Murphy has his back to the ball. Nice throw catch and a great drive by Cornell. And the point after is good. So that makes it 38 to 17 with seven minutes left. 10 plays, 71 yards, culminated by this nice throw by Nathan Ford. Takes a lot of guts to throw this football after a couple of interceptions today. Throwing it into traffic, able to fit it in there, can't be. Concentrating on the football coming up with the catch. This our first Ivy League game of the week. The future ones in two weeks will be in New York, where Columbia hosts Dartmouth. That'll be a 4 p.m. start. And uh, we'll cover each of the Ivy League schools. The following week will be in Philadelphia, another city full of tradition, as well as a school full of tradition at Penn. The plays host to Brown, Princeton at Yale. And then we'll have the game, Dale, November 22nd, right back here. I hope we get this kind of weather again. <laughs> do, do you think bad. November 22nd will be this nice? I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sissy. I don't like to be in the cold weather. I like this Indian summer stuff. <laughs> you may like the cold weather being out there. What was the coldest game you ever played in? Uh, well, you know what? We had to come back here, back east, to play a few of them. Uh, you know, some of the minus 20s, which that's not a whole lot of fun. People like to watch those games on TV as they're drinking a hot chocolate, got a fire going to go. Now, that's football weather. <laughs> they don't want to be out there actually playing. I remember one in particular on uh, Thanksgiving Day at Texas Stadium in which there was snow on the ground. The infamous Leon Lett game against the Dolphins. Boy, some people just never forget anything. <laughs> Seven minutes left in the fourth quarter, and Harvard up 38-17, and will receive the kickoff. And Gordon has trouble with it, and now finally falls on it at the 16-yard line. Nathan Ford, the nice arm strength just a moment ago, entering his senior year, if you didn't know already. A two-sport star at Cornell, sitting 358, second all-time at Cornell. And it's amazing that he barely missed any practices last spring, Dale. He'd go from playing baseball right back to the football field for spring practice. Not an easy thing to do, I would say. You don't see that very often at the collegiate level. Very, very special athlete and, and takes a lot of dedication on his part because not only that, that does take away a little bit of your study time. And uh, he was able to overcome that. First and 10 from the 16. Miller in motion. And Harvard keeps it on the ground. Jenkins 
ahead for a couple. And with more on four, here's Bob Harwood on the sidelines. Well, Rich, explosive feet and that rocket armor, the scouting report. But you're right, it's not only about football. As a third baseman and a catcher, he's been athletic on both sides of the calendar here in three years and now, of course, in his fourth year. When I asked him earlier today about the value of that, the two-sport experience, he says you learn to communicate with both programs and both coaches in terms of juggling your schedule and making sure everything meshes, but it's also about a very high personal bar. It, uh, the demand for excellence doesn't come and go with just one sports season when you wear a couple of hats and helmets. You've got to be up all year long and, and ready to split your time down the middle. Well, Bob, I also think that that speaks to what we were talking about with Barry, whether it's Andrew Barry of Harvard or Nathan Ford or Cornell. Guys were able to, to multitask it and, and put priorities where they need to be and get everything done. And, and Ford has excelled in two sports. Not only has he been a starter for the Cornell football team, but also baseball team. And you saw the numbers there just a moment ago. Pretty impressive. Uh, he may have a future as a baseball player. Well, I, I, I'm just impressed whether he goes on to the next level or not. Just impressed with the way he conducts himself and obviously struggled a little bit here today in the first half. But I see I see a great future for him. And, and again, I like this football team. If, if they can overcome that, that sluggish first half, this is a, a really tight football game. And I see Cornell going on down the line and having some success. Well, I think the one thing that Jim Knowles can hang his hat on, he said last year the performance, they weren't in games. And even though the margin it was pretty steep for Cornell. They certainly brought everything they had today. Uh, Harvard did a great job of keeping them off balance. The variety of plays, whether it was keeping it on the ground with Cheng Ho or the, the inside pass to Chris to start things off and then the reverse a little later on. They have really thrown everything at this Cornell defense. Well, and what I'm always interested in here is in the fourth quarter, your shotgun offense, up tempo offense. How do you adjust to having a big lead, having to run some clock? How it, you know, can you get that 40-second uh, play clock down to 5-4-3 before you snap it? Can you run the football when you need to? That's the sign, in my mind, of a championship football team. From the shotgun on third and three, Levi Richards takes the inside handoff, has the first down and more as Bax cuts him off, and Costello finally there to make the tackle at the 46-yard line. Nice play by Levi Richards on third down. Doing a nice job picking up third down situations. Richards playing a big part in this game. Just hand it off. Get out there with your speed. Pick a hole and go. Great blocking up front. See number 33, Ryan Paconis leading the way. Nice job by everybody up front. We haven't mentioned enough of their names, but the Harvard offensive line has done a really nice job. Have paved the way for another stellar day from Chris Pizzotti. Seven plays of more than 20 yards today for the Crimson. Here's Gordon. Make that Jenkins. And he's tackled at midfield. Frank Morand in on the stop. Well, this looks like a team. Backs. This looks like a team that's kind of been used to these situations. You got a quarterback in Pizzotti who is very, very adept at running this offense. They're up at the line of scrimmage. Still 25 seconds left on the clock. He'll let that run down and let this clock run down. Nice time consuming drive. Pizzotti on the day, 16 of 23, 281 yards and three touchdowns. And he comes out of the game with five minutes left at Harvard up by 21. Liam O'Hagan, the backup, is now on and he hands off to Ben Jenkins, who's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Chris Costello and Graham Rin on him. Make that uh, Gus Krim, rather, on the stop. Kind of interesting to see Harvard making switches during the drive. Looked like they said, okay, at the five minute mark, we're gonna go ahead and make our, our substitutions. Usually you wait till the end of the drive as short time out there brings up third down. Liam O'Hagan started a couple of games last year but was injured. Zotti took over and decided to come back for a fifth year perhaps to strengthen his draft status as a prospect, but has been absolutely terrific. 13 and two entering today as a starter. 2007 team MVP, first team all Ivy. It's tough to get your job back when Pizzotti's putting up numbers like he has. And a timeout with Harvard up 38-17 with 4-12 left.
I'll be busy and he'll be making noise and I'll think, this kid is mine. And off we go. Love is living bigger. Love. It's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Can the unstoppable be stopped? Kelly Pavlik, an unstoppable runaway train, crushing anyone in his path. Pavlik has a huge knockout. Bernard Hopkins, the iron-willed warrior who's never been knocked out. Perfect right hand by Hopkins. Can the undeterred legend derail the Pavlik Express? This is boxing. Pavlik versus Hopkins. Saturday, October 18th, live on DirecTV Pay-Per-View Channel 123. Moving day is here, the most dreaded of days. Packing, unpacking, your mind in a haze. DirecTV knows how stressful moving can be, so we make keeping your entertainment both easy and free. For uninterrupted service of the shows you like best, just leave the dish behind and we'll handle the rest. Simply dial 877-616-MOVE and we'll throw in three months of HBO stars and Showtime for free. Ted Robinson at College Football Central. Texas took the lead into the fourth quarter in Dallas, but Sam Bradford throws his fifth touchdown pass, third to Manuel Johnson. A great game in Dallas. OU up five early fourth quarter. Let's go back now to Rich and Dale. Thank you very much, Ted Robinson, right here. Chris Pizzotti. Not a bad day. Doesn't quite stack up to Sam Bradford, though. Three touchdown passes. He's now out of the game with just under five minutes left. And Harvard up by a score of 38-17. So Liam O'Hagan from the shotgun takes off and gets to midfield. It's going to be short of a first down, though. As we take a look at the Ivy League standings, you see Harvard with its first loss of the season two weeks ago at Brown. And Dale, this game crucial in the, in the fact that the last time an Ivy League champion had two losses in a season was 1982. It's happened only twice. So for them to start off 0-2, they really had to right the ship very quickly, and today they certainly did that. Well, they put themselves right back in the race, and it's going to be interesting to see how this month plays out and sets up for a very, very fun and frantic November. In the football championship subdivision, ironically, Harvard or any Ivy League team will not play for a championship despite what they might do during the regular season in the conference because the Ivy League doesn't play for a championship. Once their season is over, it's over. Well, that's only in football. You know, you talk to, you look at Harvard, and there's 41 intercollegiate sports here on campus, uh, the most of any university in the country, and uh, 40 of those will play postseason. Football won't. Very, very interesting how the conferences decide to stay out of that playoff type atmosphere only in football. Cornell will take over first and 10 from its own 20. But Harvard, in a sense, does have a championship atmosphere when they play their longtime rival, Yale. It is the final game of the year. It's obviously going to be our final game right here on Versus on November the 22nd. But that has such an atmosphere and such a tradition that it has that feel of a championship game. But none of the other teams in the conference have that same atmosphere and same experience that both Harvard and Yale have every year. Well, Coach said, you know, talking to Coach Murphy, he said that that is our bowl game. I mean, it, it is really? our bowl game each and every year. Those other teams don't have that. But he said if if the conference wanted to go to that playoff, he, he would vote for it and go along with that because he thinks it would be fun for all the schools to have a chance to be able to have that type of atmosphere. Shane Kilcoyne with a reception. He gets out to the 33-yard line. Gain of 13 and a first down for the Big Red as the clock continues to move. It stops momentarily so they could reset the chains. 41 <laughs> athletic teams on campus. That, that's amazing. I mean, I, I, in my mind, I was trying to come up with which ones and uh, looked up at the, at the media guide and, and came up with some sports that we just don't have out west. And uh, awful fun to see that. Well, <laughs> hockey and, and, uh, and badminton and girls or women's hockey and, and things of that nature. 
For some reason, I don't see Arizona State having a big hockey program. Just, just a guess. <laughs> but just a guess. Second and one from the 42. Five wide receivers for Cornell. And Ford throws to Kilcoyne. Flag on the play. And he stopped at the 49-yard line. Derek Barker in on the coverage. Eric Schultz came by to assist on the tackle. Holding. Defense. That'll be 10 yards from the end of the run. First down. So the hold on the senior. With just over three minutes left. But Cornell, which has, which is in the same situation as Harvard, doesn't really get to experience that, that, that same bowl type of atmosphere because they don't have a rivalry such as Harvard has with Yale. And that's got to be a little different. Under three minutes left, Nathan Ford calling out signals, empty backfield. Ford looking for an option, keeps it downfield, and he overthrows Baker, a flag on the play. Derek Barker on the coverage, we'll see if they got him for pass interference. Looked like a little bumping down the field, and you see, uh, Harford putting their arms up as if it might be offensive pass interference. Well, it didn't look like the ball was catchable. It was a couple of yards over the intended receiver's head. Pass interference on the offense. But that penalty will be waved off because the pass was not catchable. Second down. Nice job of officiating there. Very, very nice job of going down, discussing it. Realizing, hey, you know what? You got to throw the flag because you don't know if the pass is catchable or not. Once you decide it's not, pick up the flag, say no penalty. And it brings us to second and 10. Once again, an empty backfield. Cornell likes to send a lot of receivers out there. And this time, Kilcoyne, the receiver, makes a nice move for a couple of yards and gets down to the 28 yard line. But again, the clock continues to run. Not that Cornell at this point could. Stage such a comeback. Still a nice job of moving the ball by the big red. Well, it is. You're trying to get yourself feeling good. You're, you're running some plays. You're getting the receiver the ball and, and see what you can do at the end of a football game. So it's that there is a rhyme and a reason why you do this as a football team. Another reception for Baker. The seniors had a big day after 10 receptions a week ago. Four TDs coming into today, the most in the Ivy League. But it's been a quiet day for the Cornell offense. And Ford comes up short of Zach Canning. Well, the two Cornell touchdowns, one coming from Zach Canty, the other a two-yard run from Randy Barber early in the second quarter, and that has been it for the day as far as the Big Red finding the end zone. A little disappointing showing here for Jim Knowles who had put a lot of effort into this game. Done more than the others obviously but certainly was looking for the intensity level to be a little different today. Looking for the outcome to be obviously a little different. This has been a one sided affair thus far for the Crimson who have led since the third play of the game. And that ball was deflected intended for Shane Kilcoin. And it'll bring up fourth down and one. Well, this guy we haven't talked much about, a guy who does have NFL pro prospects and scouts looking at Steve Oletta, 6'6", 315 pounds, a guy who both coaching staffs feel can play at the next level, has the size, the frame. But what they love most of all is his recoverability, meaning you get out of position a little bit and every offensive lineman does. How do you recover? Here's a guy who can do that, and they look for him to be, if not drafted, at least a free agent guy who can stick with the National Football League. 142 left, fourth down pass, complete to Kenny for a first down. So the chains move. The clock will stop momentarily with 137. How was, how was your recoverability as a center? Well, I, you know what? <laughs> it, it got worse as I got older, and by the time I was 39, it, not much recoverability. <laughs> A long career with the Dallas Cowboys that included a championship ring, which you have on today. Unfortunately, haven't been able to get a shot of that. Ford on the run, throws, and it is incomplete. 
always interesting to you know to listen to scouts and coaches talk and and, and what uh, what attributes they look for in players and and when you when you only football comes up with words like recoverability <laughs> you know i mean how is that even a, a stat or a column in your report but but it is and it's very important especially those offensive tackles who or usually pass blocking against smaller, quicker, faster guys, and, and how can you readjust? How can you go from one direction to another quick enough to block those smaller guys? You remember what they said about you coming out of SMU is four throws and completes to Walters, and he's wrapped up at the six-yard line. Do I remember what they said? Yes. Yeah, they said long shot. Um, no, it... They don't let you see those things, especially. I figured maybe then. word of mouth may have gotten back to you. Yeah, the, you've been, been around quite the successful athlete throughout your career, both in college and the NFL. Snap to Ford, and he throws, and it goes off the hands of Baker, the intended receiver. Well, you gotta love Andrew Barry. You see right there, he's playing with one shoe. Tries to he tries to get the shoe back on. Falls off on the last play. He's trying to put it back on. He knows that they're going to snap the ball, so he says, the heck with it. I'll just play with one shoe on. I guess shoes might, I guess shoes might be overrated a little bit. Perhaps. Good thing it's not a muddy field today. <laughs> <laughs> Could not have asked for a more picture-perfect day as we have a timeout on the field. Not, not a cloud in the sky. Temperature's about 70 here this afternoon. Just along the Charles River. And... The great Northeast is known for its hockey, both here at Harvard and all around the Boston area. More hockey, the NHL on versus next week. Monday, our first visit to Washington, where Ovechkin and the Caps take on Roberto Luongo and the Canucks. Then Tuesday, a rematch of last year's Eastern Conference Finals, when Sidney Crosby's Penguins and Daniel Breyer's Flyers drop the puck in the Steel City. The NHL on versus next week. And with more, here's Bob Harwood. Actually, Rich, I'm targeting you and Dale because uh, I've been to Phoenix. I've been to Arizona. They do play hockey there. Wayne Gretzky and the Coyotes would call you on the carpet for suggesting there's no <laughs> frozen water at all in that state. Although I've also covered Mariner spring training there in the past. 110 degrees in February. Ain't hockey weather, guys. The great one has done a nice job in Phoenix. No question about that. But no college hockey that I, that I know of, at least, Bob. Maybe we, maybe we could work on that. Isn't there something called the Bean Pot Hockey Challenge yes, or something? Back? See, we've the heard of that area stuff. Schools all, all play a heated, a heated tournament, which is great every year. Ford on fourth down throws it incomplete. See, we're 45 we're seconds left. Harvard will take an E. I did stop by the Hockey Center yesterday. Boy, what a gorgeous campus here on Harvard. They, they have everything, and it's just you look, you look out, you see the Charles River and uh, Downtown Boston in the distance, it's it's very picturesque. As a matter of fact, by the way, just not to slight the Cornell hockey program, former Cornellian David Lenevieu, former Phoenix Coyotes goalie. We mentioned Dominic Moore of Harvard scoring a goal for the Maple Leafs in their season opening win over the Red Wings the other night. So both schools have been represented by some very fine players in the NHL, including current Harvard hockey coach Ted Donato. That was our view, that's our view from the press box. And a beautiful view it has been this afternoon as the final seconds continue to tick away. We'll have one more play. We have a great, great view of the skyline of Boston. You can see the Sitco sign that hangs right over Fenway Park from where we are. It has been a terrific day here at Harvard Stadium. Now 105 years old. There Doesn't look a day over 104. There could be some baseball here in a couple days. Yes, there will. Game two tonight between the Red Sox and the Rays in Tampa Bay, but the final seconds ticking away, and Harvard will improve to 3-1 and one with a 38-17 victory. They have won seven of the last eight meetings now over the Big Red, the handshake line at midfield. Very nice show of sportsmanship, and Cornell has denied its first 4-0 start since 1999, falling to 3-1 and one with its first loss in the Ivy League today. But a terrific performance from Chris Pizzotti leading the Harvard attack with three touchdown passes today, Dale. Well, and what he did was he took advantage of Cornell not coming out on all cylinders. And Harvard offense took advantage of that. The defense stopped him early and then kind of ran away with it. I, I thought the game was decided in the first quarter, quarter and a half. 
Cornell not, convert, not converting third downs, Harvard taking advantage of that. Both things, both teams I think are heading in the right direction. I think Cornell can get that first quarter, quarter and a half fixed up, and you're going to be in every football game this season. Obviously, Harvard is going to be tough to beat as the season goes along. But Harvard came out firing early, and an impressive display by freshman Adam Chrysis, who was only put into the lineup today because of injuries to Marco Iannuzzi and Chris Lordich. Iannuzzi's out for the year, so Chris has had a strong week of practice. The coaching staff was confident in his ability, and he responded with two touchdowns, one receiving the other on a reverse for 22 yards, and what a day it was for the freshman. And Bob Harwood is standing by with Chris Pizzotti. Bob? Rich, we have to pull him out of a sideline celebration, and there was a hug, I'm assuming, mom or dad or somebody yeah, no close. Dad. That yeah, was your yeah, father. Yeah. Uh, it's going to read like an aerial assault today, but uh, from the quarterback standpoint, what did the ground attack mean, reestablishing oh, It means that? everything. Uh, the past couple of games, we've had a really good running game going, and uh, a lot of the passes today were short, and all the wide receivers did the work, so I had a pretty easy day. Right, but uh, it all starts up front, too. Our offensive line has done an unbelievable job this year, and uh, they continue that today. Chris, you had time to see a young kid, and Adam Chris is uh, obviously open on that one play. How important is it for a quarterback back to have the confidence that a freshman on a first major touch is going to deliver. Yeah, it's very important. It's very important for uh, my confidence, and especially his. He was here all summer working with the team, so we knew we could do. We had some senior guys go down, and then he stepped up, and anytime you see a young guy like that step up, it's, uh, it's huge for the team. Has this team rid the highs and the lows well so far in a 2-2 two and two start? Yeah, we had a tough loss uh, last week. Uh, that was our only loss, and then we're coming off uh, a good big win this week, but we got to keep uh, our head level each week and just get ready for each game. Chris, thanks a lot. Good luck against Lehigh. Thank you very much. All right, Rich. Thank you very much, Bob Harwood, with our star of the game, Chris Pizzotti. Another big day. Three touchdown passes, 281 yards passing, improving his stock as he tries to prepare himself for the NFL draft in April, leading the way today for Harvard, which beats Cornell 38 to 17. For Dale Hellestray, Bob Harwood, and our entire versus Drew, this is Rich Ackerman saying good afternoon from Harvard Stadium. Now let's go to Ted Robinson in our versus studio. Well, thanks very much, Rich and Dale, and welcome back to College Football Central. Ted Robinson, Roland Williams, after a surprisingly easy win for Harvard. And uh, it was interesting that at Cornell, this is the way football used to be, Rogue. The team that threw 50-plus passes was the team that lost the game, Cornell having to play catch-up the whole way. Yeah, I, I thought this was very impressive. Chris Pizzotti, the quarterback, did a tremendous job for Harvard, getting the ball to all his receivers. Very impressive. They're right back on track. Yeah, I was going to say, it looked back to form in the Ivy today. We'll talk more about that during our college football central. But, of course, the game of the day is taking place at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, and this one is absolutely living up to its billing. Texas and Oklahoma. Texas just finishing a drive. They had a long pass to Jordan Shipley down to the one-foot line. Cody Johnson took it in for a touchdown. Texas added two. And so Oklahoma's getting the ball back. 38-35. Texas could be last team with the ball wins. <laughs> the shootout. They call it a shootout for a reason. All offense. But where's the defense? The defense is secondary. Both teams really got to look at themselves and say, hey, I got to get better this game and moving forward in the season. All right. Well, Continued update you during the rest of our half hour here on Texas and OU. Of course, in the Ivy League, it's Harvard and Yale that played for the championship last year. They're picked preseason co-favorites, and Yale back on its own track today in a different way. Their huge running back, Mike McLeod, averaging only 3.3 yards a carry coming in, well over 100 yards. His biggest day so far this season, and Yale's up 20-7 to on Dartmouth in the fourth. The other four Ivies are all playing out of league today. Lafayette with the lead over Columbia in New York City. Holy Cross with the lead in Worcester there on top of Brown, 34-21. As well, Colgate has a lead on Princeton in the fourth quarter. And in the second quarter, Penn and Georgetown is all Penn. So we've started to reference this row. Harvard beat Yale last year in the game mm -hmm. to win the Ivy Championship. Again, we'll have the game here on Versus for you this year, November 22. Do you, do you suspect that that's going to be for the Ivy Championship? I believe so. You know, when you watch the game, you see improvement out of Harvard. The head coach, Tim Murphy, he gets all the credit. This team lost early in the season to Brown. Why? They had three turnovers and lost a football game. This game, how many turnovers? 
Donut, zero. That shows improvement, shows maturity. This team was coming in, making plays, getting the job done, and it was impressive. I'm looking for them to see them improve as this game goes on. Yeah, so it's interesting today. Harvard got its quarterback going. Yale got its running back going. And, of course, we'll be seeing Yale coming up here in a few weeks on Versus. Texas and Oklahoma playing the game of the day. We'll get you the whole story and magnificent quarterbacking by Sam Bradford and Colt McCoy in a wild game in Dallas. Highlights and a recap when College Football Central returns on Versus. All my life, I wanted to play Harvard football. I'm studying to be a physician, but I was born to play basketball. First time I stepped on that ice, I got goosebumps. It was the first round of the championship. We were like this team out of nowhere. We came from behind and won. First win ever by a number 16 seed over a number one seed. And everyone was like, Harvard? You never know what's going to happen. Harvard versus Yale, the oldest rivalry in college football. And in the last 42 seconds, we scored 16 points to tie the game. He said it, and it ends 29, 29. What a finish! Man, I want to play in a game like that. I don't think I was really aware of the history until I got here and saw the fans. The year we won the NCAA title, that was big. Lane McDonald led the team to a 4-3 overtime victory over Minnesota. Fans were going wild. I want to make them go wild too. Harvard Sports. Come watch us play. Come watch us play. Come watch us play. At TIAA Cref, we provide financial solutions for those who serve the greater good. We offer personalized objective advice, a commitment to consistent growth, low fees, and guaranteed income for life. Well, I see a light. Put our retirement expertise to work for you. Call today. TIAA Craft, financial services for the greater good. What was the first thing your husband said to you that morning? He looked at me and said, Susan, where am I? <sighs> and why was that upsetting for you? My name is Diane. I need a better lawyer. Give me a lawyer. I didn't kill anybody. I'm not a killer. Crazy times call for crazy fun. Enter the ultimate Vegas escape sweepstakes at visitlasvegas.com. A work of art. A finely tuned machine. A sanctuary. A command center. A sophisticated sedan. A sports car. Together. Introducing the all new Nissan Maxima, the four door sports car. Lease a new 2009 Nissan Maxima for $339 a month for 39 months. Whoever complained about burning the midnight oil never held the title world's number one dad. And for a job well done, you need a tool well built. More torque, greater comfort. The Craftsman Cross Force Ratchet Wrench. One more Craftsman tool, guaranteed for life. For tools and advice, visit the Garage of Knowledge at Craftsman.com. There's a Craftsman in all of us. Welcome back to College Football Central on Versus. Coming into play today, Oklahoma fourth in the nation in scoring offense. Texas sixth, both averaging just under 50 points a game, and they're playing that kind of game today. Magnificent quarterbacking by both Sam Bradford and Colt McCoy, and the shootout is now entering its final stages at the Cotton Bowl, so let's tell you and show you what's happened so far. Bradford and McCoy matching up. A lot of the talk about McCoy coming in was about his running. He's done nothing but throwing today, although Bradford got Oklahoma going with an early touchdown throw to Manuel Johnson. Now watch this. This is the tight end. I thought tight ends caught the ball. <laughs> they do catch the <laughs> ball. That. that was a nice little play. Way to, way to help him out, wide receiver. Nice tip from Gresham to Ryan Broyles. But Jordan Shipley answered right back 
We helped him along there. 96 yards on the kick return. Now we're going to give the tight end some real love. Gresham hangs on to this and finishes. Yeah, well, this comes down to Sam Bradford. Hey, staying in there with his receiver. Get the guy the ball. This guy's more like a wide receiver type anyway, so you knew he was going to bounce back. Oklahoma's offense is truly impressive. But much of this game has been Oklahoma's striking and Texas answering, and Colt McCoy did it on the very next possession, marching the horns down. Cody Johnson bulls it in from one, and it's 21-20 after a Texas field goal. OU leads it at the half. Now it's Bradford again, finds Johnson, who slips the middle of the field. His second touchdown, OU back up eight. But here comes McCoy, and he connects with Shipley. Texas kicks the point, OU by one. Now Texas with a field goal takes the lead into the fourth, and here's Bradford rolling and finding Manuel Johnson for the third time in the game, the fifth touchdown pass for Bradford. But Texas back after McCoy and Shipley connected on a long pass to the one foot line. Johnson takes it home. Now Texas goes for two. McCoy on the tip, it's Quan Cosby with the catch. Texas has just forced Oklahoma to punt, so Texas has possession of the ball here with just under six minutes to play in the Cotton Bowl, 38-35. And of course, this is a, a massive game for so many reasons down the line in the Big 12 South, no, not notably uh, is that Texas has to come back and play Missouri next week. All right, we'll get you caught up on that one. Colorado and Kansas, the Jayhawks going back to Lawrence after their escape in Ames, Iowa last week. Cody Hawkins gets Colorado on the board first here, hitting Cody Crawford for the score. Yeah, Colorado's been playing good football, but Kansas must win this game. They got so many games. Oklahoma, Texas, Texas Tech, Missouri. This is a must-win game for Kansas to even compete in the Big 12. And the Kansas defense here with the play. Jake Laptad sacks Hawkins for the KU safety. That makes it 9-7, and now Todd Reeson gets going. He didn't get going until the second half last week, and here hits Desmond Briscoe for the score that puts the Jayhawks up 16-7. Hawkins brings Colorado back late third quarter with his quarterback sneak, but now with the inside handoff to Jake Sharp, and Sharp lunges for the score, so Kansas with a lead, and I think the interesting part is you see now they've added another touchdown to make it 30-14, to the, the point you mentioned, Rose, so Kansas has the toughest schedule in the Big 12 North. So this is a game they absolutely have to win. Yeah, and I think that as, this, as the season goes on, there's still another big game Missouri has yet to play. There's just big games all over the place in the Big 12. you got to come compete every single week. Now, meanwhile, the struggles continue for Mike Sherman in College Station. K-State all over A&M in the first half of that game. Here's an intriguing one. Nebraska taking its team into Texas Tech to face Graham Harrell and company. We're just underway there in Lubbock. And coming up tonight, Iowa State and Baylor will play in Waco and Oklahoma State and Missouri. Another That's one of those. Game. Yep. I'm, what do you think? Well, it starts out from offense. Again, Big 12 has tremendous offenses when you watch all these games. But it starts with Missouri. Missouri has a top-ranked offense. So does Oklahoma State. They're going to be clashing back and forth. But as this game progresses, the winner of this game is going to show you a little bit about how the whole big picture is going to unveil. I want to see. I can't wait to see where Kansas fits in, where does yeah. Texas fit in, where's Oklahoma. It's so much excitement in the Big 12. If you follow college football, you've probably heard this stat somewhere during the week, but it is still amazing. Missouri has not had a three and out yet this year. <laughs> not one under Chase Daniel. All right, update from Dallas. Texas has taken the ball back from Oklahoma and has extended its lead. Colt McCoy again marching him down the field. And it's Cody Johnson, the short yardage back, his third red zone touchdown. And how about this? Texas is now up 10 on Oklahoma late in the game. The interesting part about this, this is the 10th year now that Bob Stoops coaching Oklahoma and Mac Brown coaching Texas have connected in this Red River game. OU has the edge 6-3. Mac Brown looking pretty good today. They are. And like we just talked about, you're starting to identify who's who in the zoo. Oklahoma, number yeah. one team in the nation, should be dominating this game. Colt McCoy showing you the combination of running and passing the 